Ramadan is right around the corner. And you know what that means? Dates. We open our fast with them. We close our fast with them. We tell terrible jokes about them. But now it's time to get serious about them. This year, I'm going to be getting my dates from Holy Land dates. Holy Land dates are grown, harvested and packaged in Palestine. Why is that important? I'll tell you why. Holy Land Dates supports Palestine through trade as well as aid. By having as much of its work done in Palestine, it enables them to support Palestinian workers and businesses to keep the economy running. An example of this is the soap factory in Nablus where the Holy Land Dates soap is made. This soap factory is run by Palestinian widows and giving business to them means that they can continue to run their business and continue to earn. Back to dates. Whether you're buying them for yourself, in your house, for Ramadan, or you're buying them as a gift, head over to freshlygrounded.com forward slash dates to grab yours now. Oh, and they taste great. At the time of this recording, we are less than two weeks away from our flagship finale in London for the Freshly Grounded Live Tour 2022. This show has been in the making for over two years. It was meant to happen in 2020 and because of COVID and everything in between, it's now happening now in March 2022. And we have been able to refine our live events to the point where we feel like we have the most special event you guys are going to love. It's in the iconic London Aldrich Theatre in the West End. It's a phenomenal venue. We've done that venue once before and it's now the home of Freshly Grounded in London. We've already done the Birmingham show. The feedback was amazing. We're doing a show in Manchester in a few short days time in exactly a week from today and in the finale at London. Tickets are still available available at freshlygrounded.com for slash tour. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this event. Without any further ado, this is episode 270 of Freshly Grounded. It's an amazing episode with Ben Ikra. I've been wanting to have Ben on the podcast for such a long time. We finally made it happen uh, and we speak a bit about, we speak about so many fun stuff. So we speak about ADHD. First of all, Ben explains about kind of the positive impacts uh, that he's had as well as the challenges uh, that he had with his diagnosis of ADHD growing up. Um, we also speak about Ben's uh, revert story and how he kind of went into kind of the deep corners of the punk lifestyle and how eventually that actually led him uh, to becoming a Muslim. It's a really, really interesting story. I'm sure you guys are going to love it. Uh, so without any further ado, this is episode 270 of Freshly Grounded with Ben Ikra. And welcome to a Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the p- podcast. That's better. Created by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by. After that bit. Best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? We on yeah. Ben, salam alaikum. Thank you for joining Wa-alaikum me. Alaikum salam. It's, it's, it is, feels so good to have you on the podcast. Yeah? Why? yeah. Well, I've wanted you on for ages. Yeah? Yeah, man. Because I, I think there's a, a community of like uh, Twitter bros. And uh, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you just see someone pop up every now and again. And I think even when I wasn't following you, uh, I would see you because like, you know, the brother like Jordan that would like reply to you and like your stuff. And so you end up finding each other, don't you? And <clears throat> don't worry, I, we, I now do follow circle, you. circle, isn't it? Yeah. In a circle. So I was, I'd love to have been on because I've seen that you're... Um, I've seen your streams online with Aira and uh, you know you just get a vibe and you're like oh man I would love to have Ben on uh, the podcast sometime and alhamdulillah we've been able to make it happen it's wicked yeah. I'm happy to be here man you, you need to come to our London event bro yeah because, well you when is it? to come to our Manchester event as well. I, I saw it because um, <laughs> I'm in a group of um, some brothers on um, Telegram and they posted a thing like, oh, oh really they, and they're like Birmingham based and I was like yeah but I prefer to go to London so is it coming soon is it Cause yeah so um, it's at um, it's in London obviously all which theatre are London and um, it's going to be amazing Really come down honestly. Inshallah, I'm not saying it's my day off. So, <laughs> oh, is it, it is. Yeah, I just checked. Bring whoever you want, man. Just text yeah, me yeah. some names. Uh, but it's it's fun because w- what it is the, the the fun thing about these events is that 
the question is, how do you do a live version of Fresh Grounded or, or a live version of a podcast, right? Because it would be essentially boring if it's just you interviewing people. Now, <clears throat> over the years, we've been, this is like our third year, I think, running now, uh, doing an event. And we've realized what goes right and what doesn't go right. And at first, I think we did start. So our first live event was like half fun and half interviewing. And we found that the interview parts were... Uh, so, so, so then the second live event that we did was like a lot more interviewing. Mm. And then what we realized is that the fun and the vibes and the, and, and the making the audience have, allowing the audience have fun and enjoying themselves is a lot more kind of enjoyable as an environment yeah, at a live yeah. event than, you know, uh, really deep rooted conversation and interviews like how, like how we do on the podcast. Yeah. And so I think through doing the live events over the years, we've managed to refine down to a, a format that you could only really capture when you're there. Yeah, yeah. And that's why this time and moving forward, we're not going to release our live events in their entirety um, on YouTube. There's two reasons. One, okay. we want to be able to, we want the people in the audience to feel this exclusive like event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then secondly, you can never capture, no matter how great your cameras are, you can't capture the ambience of a live event the atmosphere. unless you're there, the yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's just so much fun, man. There's like, we do, so we, we've turned it into like, there's like variety kind of show where it's like all halal, you know, no music, nothing like that, but just audience interaction. And it's, you know, we're not, not forced them to interact, but like, you know, you can stick your hand up if you want to interact and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, questions, uh, surprises, giveaways, uh, amazing stories. And then we've got these keynotes. So then there's like a serious element of it. Like this year, Hamza's doing the keynotes yeah. and um, oh, his keynote just, blew everyone away. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of the clips on Instagram, yeah, yeah. but I'm really excited for him to deliver it in um, Manchester, London, because you know what Hamza's like, absolute perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. And so he, I was like, can, uh, like, um, how are we basically gonna go about doing these in Manchester and London? And, and he said, I'm gonna go over them and I'm gonna um, look at the feedback and try and make each one better. And I'm like, how can you make that better? It was phenomenal, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, every, yeah. there was like, everyone was just like in awe of the keynote. And um, he's gonna do the same one, but he's gonna, he's gonna try and improve it. And on top of that, he's gonna write an essay based off of the keynote. Yeah. And he's gonna allow us to publish the essay version oh, wow. as well. He, he just he does things about, with does he? he does things with Ihsan. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it, I, I can't explain it in words, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's going to be an amazing event. So yeah. please do come down, bring your family and yeah, friends. Inshallah. It's That'd really, it, it's like very friendly in terms of the audience. Well, we've got like a family section if people want to come with their mahrams and sit with their yeah, mahrams. Yeah. Then we've got a brother section and a sister yeah. section. Brilliant. So it's really respectful of all of That's that. Cool. Obviously no alcohol served. And you can, you can it's, some, it's 16 plus, so there's no kids running around or screaming. And you can, uh, the idea is to have like a respectful live event. So it respects adults' intelligence. It's not like... A, patronizing or kiddie live event yeah, yeah. Um, at the same time is lots of fun and you could bring your wife you could bring your boys you could bring your parents and hopefully there's like something for everyone that's awesome like, yeah. it sounds like something that's um, the best of the behind the scenes sort of thing it, yeah yeah that's awesome. It's really unique. It's, it's really good. Yeah, I I, yeah. I really want to. I'm looking forward. To, you're gonna be in the front row. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, but now let's talk about you. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, so. I've been wanting to have you on for such a long time. And like I said, I've seen you on IA, I've seen you on other podcasts and streams and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to start with Ben Iqra, the uh, the human, the man, before we speak about all of the amazing kind of uh, works that you're into and, and, and the kind of stuff that you're passionate about. So a great place to start is childhood. Mm. Uh, what was childhood like uh, for you? Sorry, Ben, just put your mic a bit, bit closer. closer. Thank you. That, that I didn't expect that question. Yeah. There what you was go. childhood look for me? I okay. started digging. Um, so I grew up in a little small town. Okay. Um, n near Northampton. So, yeah, little white town, um, working class. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say, really. That's it. <laughs> I don't know what to say about my childhood, man. Um, I was talking earlier about um, how I've got ADHD. 
and how I hyper focus. It's we now know it's called hyper focus, but back then it was just Ben's on a mental one or it's on a uh, phase or whatever. So as a kid, I got into really got into things like phases of, uh, of things, but I'd perfect them and then be like uh, not bothered about them, start a new thing. So I did that a lot as a kid with different things. Um, I remember when I was probably about from s- like seven to ten. I used to love Michael Jackson, right? Okay. And I used to dance like Michael Jackson. Did you manage to finesse the moonwalk? Bro, I won competitions. No. I'll get you a little, cl- I'll get you, I haven't got a clip, but I've got a picture from a newspaper article. You must. So, so, so it wasn't big like competitions. We used to go like, cause we're, we're quite a poor family. So we used to go on caravan park holidays. Okay. So we didn't go abroad, we went on these little, like, that, the, the beach and stuff. And in the evenings, they used to do these clubs. Like, it's very, there's very working class and stuff. Um, and they used to do talent competitions. And I used to enter it every time, going, right, I'm going to do Michael Jackson, and I'll just win every time. But as oh. I got older, and as I didn't uh, like, like it as much, I, it was kind of forced, because what you would win is a free holiday. So mum and oh, my dad really? were like, yeah, go on, go on, mate. Go on. <laughs> so yeah, you'd win a free holiday if you win, win the finals and stuff. So it was awesome, man. It was, it was fun when I was a kid. But anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about Michael Jackson. <laughs> no, just, so did you grow up with both your parents in the yeah, house? Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. So my mum my, uh, my worked as a cleaner. My dad was a factory worker. Right. Yeah, I, I grew up in that town since t- until I was about, I think I left when I was 17, I think, maybe, se- yeah, 17. What was that like leaving at 17 and how did that come about? Not many people leave their town yeah. at 17. So uh, when I was 16, I got into punk. So um, like punk scene and stuff. And it was kind of become became my new identity. And by the time I was 17 and everything, I I was really into my independence and stuff. And I, I, what was it? Was it 17? No, it was. It must have been eighteen. I think it was eighteen. I I, I moved out, um, and I went to. I, w- I got a job in a tattoo studio, um, not tattooing, but managing it because they sold clothes and other things like that, jewelry and things, um, alternative punky things. Um, so I moved to. Uh, I moved into a little bedsit. It wasn't that far from a family. So in, in near Oxford, um, and and yeah, that's where it started. I also I moved to London for. Well, I must have been seventeen then. I moved to London. Um, for a bit because that's where the punk scene was and that's where all the cool people were and i actually lived in a um a little abandoned building for a bit <laughs> with my really? girlfriend but not in a like desperate way it was like a little punk refuge okay. and it was like a little community and we'd go we'd we'd go out into the london city center like um where all the tourist places were looking like punks and tourists will come with cameras and stuff because all that like, british punk and then we'd ask for them Go oh, no, a quid, a quid if you want a photo. We would earn that money, buy food, and then go to a gig and and like go to a music gig. And that was like every night. It's, um, it's yeah. interesting because I um, didn't expect that, did you? No, I, I didn't expect <laughs> it actually. But what it makes me think about is the fact that I suppose as humans we are always looking to be in a community of some sense mm. and. I haven't obviously heard yet the the continuation of the story yeah, past yeah. the punk days, but I know that ultimately it ends up as Ben being a Muslim, and so even just looking at those three categories of like the I I I I know of kind of like the community of like um, going to kind of holiday uh, camp uh, like camps and stuff like that, and then you're going into kind of a community of people in regards to like the punk community and then eventually you become Muslim. Do you, have you, has being a part of communities always been something that you've actively done or do you think that it's just something that you naturally have always gone towards? Do you know what? I'm actually quite a lone wolf okay. and I struggle to, to kind of, um, to I struggle to integrate into communities normally. So actually it was like, uh, the punk thing was rebellious. Like, in my, like you know, as a teenager, it went a bit too far. And I was quite rebellious and I got into the idea of like political idea of anarchy and atheism oh, okay. and, and the religious thing of atheism and stuff. Um, and I was just very like, I was just it was just like a rebellious thing. It, it lasted five years. I was like punk until my early 20s. Um, but, um, you know, big mohawk, leather jacket, studs and all that. It's crazy. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, but 
I, it, it did feel good. There was like a brotherhood there, but I still like was known to be the lone wolf. So I've never been like, this is my community sort of thing. And that was that kind of was the same sort of thing for the Muslim community when I became Muslim, which we can talk about later if you want to go down the journey a bit. But I really struggled to kind of be, like integrate myself into the Muslim community because there's this identity crisis yeah, and yeah, culture yeah. shock as well. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, actually, like but now, alhamdulillah, I'm, I feel like uh, I've, I've, I live in a little town near Oxford, um, and we got a little local Muslim community, and I love helping out and stuff like that. And it's brilliant. But naturally, I kind of I liked my own space and stuff. So um, I think it, because of Islam, I want to kind of give give to community and give back a lot. I think it's sort of, that's what my uh, motivation is, I think. I, I want to talk about that, but uh, before we do, let's track it back a bit. So you mentioned your ADHD. Um, at what point did you receive like a diagnosis? So in my, it would probably, I don't know if I, they did it when I was in junior school, but in um, secondary school, I was like, had learning, because I'm dyslexic. So I, reading, writing was really hard for me. Mm. Um, and it stopped my progression of learning. So I had like once a week or something like that um, learning support. And I think they did all the tests then. I don't remember because I didn't care. So, um, but yeah, like I did, I never looked into it. I never got, I got a treatment for the dyslexia, but the um, ADHD thing, I think it was functionable. So it, it wasn't right. like, I wasn't like, you know, when you think of ADHD, you think of the naughty kid, like going around bullying people and da, da, da. It, was, it wasn't like that. And I think um, it was more that, I used to just get really into one thing and not care about anything else, but be really good at that one thing and then move on to something else. And it's just how long yeah, does that take? And, and I don't like lost. sitting down too long and stuff. Um, it's all all sorts from from a few months to years. So yeah, and that's what it is and how important it is. So I'm interested to to understand more, kind of, with regards to ADHD. The ha- what it feels like or or, or or perhaps if you can sometimes feel misaligned from others. And I say that because you mentioned again off air, like the hyper focus mm. um, thing. And it made me think about the fact that um, sometimes I've been in situations where I've had something that I'm passionate about and it's kind of been a bit of a phase and then I've gone on to something else. And when that's happened, if anybody's ever said, oh, phase was going through a phase, it's like the most offensive thing. Yeah, because for me yeah. at that time, it's unpassionate. It's about no, it. Yeah, and you think it, no, it's, this is my life. Ask, is that, have you experienced that? What is it like? Because you mentioned that, it's, you know, people would say in the past that Ben's going through a phase. What is it? What did it feel like when people had that impression, oh, Ben's just going through a phase? So in my when I was younger and less mature, I was so engulfed in that phase, let's say, that I really believe, no, this is the thing that I love now. I want to do this forever. I've been to college like three times, different subjects, for example. Um, But I really believe that's the thing. And then it's, uh, and then everyone's like, it's Ben's phase again. So I think I'm just used to it. Um, There's been, because of that, there's been decisions I've made in my life that weren't about phase or anything like that. It was decisions that I was like becoming Muslim, yeah. Um, where at the beginning, obviously, what did, what would people think? Like, oh, be- yeah, the, well, he's, yeah, it's just you know, he's become a Muslim. Another phase, or, you know, I mean, it's ten years now. So, yeah, <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's not a phase, um, or is it a ten-year phase? I don't know. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> not yeah, no, yeah. no, no, it's stuff for long. Right but um, you. you know, I mean, um, but yeah, um, it, it uh, that offensive thing. I get that, but as an adult now, I, I find kind of I, I've tamed it, so I know it comes. I know I'm on the hyper focus or, the, or whatever, so it's cool. Like and and what it, I can become really productive with it. Wow. So for example, learning how to edit, I went. I know it wasn't learned. It was live streaming. I went meant like months. Like you are a pro sh- live streamer. Oh, thank you, man. I, I'm all I, right. I really look. I'm when right. I see I, when I think of Ben Ikra, I think the first thing I think of is live streaming. Do you know what? It's bit, I had to I had to stop my live streams on my channel for a while because of work and everything. Because sure. everything was happening during lockdown, and then when I came out of lockdown and got went back to work, the the nature of my previous job, I couldn't do that job fully. But I was like doing half a job, so I had to keep. A, I, I was basically like a, a shop manager. I won't go into what company and everything, but um, we do other things than just shop stuff. So I was just like working in a shop at that during lockdown because we couldn't do the other things because the restrictions. So it wasn't a hard job. So I'd have an easy job, plan what I'm going to do for live stream, go home, do live stream. But as 
the job became as the restrictions went and the job became more what it was and it's a bit more focused and takes energy out i just didn't have the time for life you know i had a kid uh, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah and 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 it, i had to stop, pause it because i had opportunities to do better things so like working with iera any dower I tried to do on my streams is nothing compared to what the reach I could have with Iera, sure. uh, helping out um, EF Dower. Um, so, so, but now I'm going to start again, inshallah. Wow. Uh, hopefully, um, I'm going to give it a few months to get used to my new roles. That I'm, I'm self-employed now, um, and I'm going to get started again. So, when I was talking, uh, I'm hyper focusing. So, uh, uh, so I was talking yeah, about, no, yeah, I was talking about I'm, using. I'm loving it. I'm, yeah. I'm loving listening. I was talking about how I use it as like a superpower. So I got really into our YouTube algorithms, what works as in live streams, how to become a better live streamer. Because when you live stream, it matters what content you're doing. Normally when someone starts, they're just themselves talking stuff or do it playing a game or whatever. And they don't think about how can I make this better? How can this be entertaining? What's it like watching it? Do, do people watch their live streams afterwards? How can you improve? And I just went on mental and I just watched all these YouTubers that do um, different things. And then I'd go, right, I'm going to implement this this week and try that, see if it works. So it might be something on the software OBS. I did little pop-ups, for example, if someone subscribed. Um, we had, because I used to do a reaction stream um, series every week. Um, and w what would happen is something would happen in the live stream that was funny and everyone loved and so I made that like a little clip, like it become a meme. So I, when someone subscribed, like it was, I did a thing reacting to the funny moments of Speaker's Corner, just that it was like, it was a, it was a, like a two hour live stream, but the, we made it into a clip of 25 minutes or something like that. And it was so funny. Oh. And the things that we were reacting to became the pop-ups. So I, had to, I was like, right, I want to do that. And I learned how to do that, focus it and make it really good. And this, it was a shame because I kind of, I felt like I perfected it and it was working really well. I did a live stream. I had a friend that would edit it for me. I'll give him some money because I didn't have the time. So um, i will do it. He would then take it, um, cut it into, I wanted like 20 minute out on average video out of it um, or uh, multiple videos but um, and it was working really well so we opened up these live streams I was getting like 100 view viewers and stuff like that and the, the strategy was to do a live stream take the live stream down and then publish the, the the best bits of that live stream so and then talk about this by the way this is a live stream come and join it's a, and advertise the live stream so people come they see that couple of hours entertainment exclusive bit like you were talking about you're you're not going to publicize the um the live event like that because it's a different vibe watching a live stream on the chat talking interacting yeah, with it, is, it yeah. you know than watching something um passively so so and it just grew and grew and it was getting to a really good place and my videos that i was making because i'm quite a small channel at the time i think i was like eight thousand um subscribers alhamdulillah um uh, but it was just growing and I was getting like 25,000 um, like on a video within a, a couple of days. And I was like, oh, wicked. It's it's getting there. But I had to stop it, man. I had to, I had to stop. What actually happened, my camera flickered on one live stream I was doing. It was and it just went shut down. I was like, what happened? It actually, the, the power bit blew up and then blew up the camera. So I was like, I had to wait until I get that fixed. So I ended up getting a new camera and stuff. But by that point, I was too busy to live stream again. So I didn't, didn't bother. But Were you using a, a plug in the wall battery? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I had a battery. Uh, and I think it was because one uh, a few times I left my camera on Baxton overnight and things. Yeah. It might have just over overheated it. Or you something. know what? I've done that a few times. Mm. And like someone's come in the office and gone, oh, the, you know, the camera has been on. I'm like, oh, no. Uh, because it's like horrible, we, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. because you got to look at That's your like. Bread and butter. Of course, yeah. man. If you're like a chauffeur, that's your car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, handle Yeah. That, that has. It's cool. Uh, even then, when you, you one of the things that you just mentioned with 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 hyperfocus is that now that you're older, you seem to be able to tame it. Yeah. So I'm oh, sorry. Go on. Well, well, the question I had on that was, I suppose, being that you're now 32, you're a lot more mature than your younger days. Younger days it makes it sound like you're really old. You're not old, but I am. But being like a, a adult. Yeah. Uh, what would your advice be to anyone listening who has ADHD or who struggles with hyperfocus mm. and, 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 and is struggling to tame it like you've now been able to do? So what I'll, I'll first I'll first tell you how I was able to tame it, how I think I, I might be deluded and not be able to tame it. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but but and then I'll, I'll answer that question if that's all right. So so it's about 
starting to reflect on what you're doing every day and why you're doing it. So instead of just so instead of just uh, doing things in the moment and like almost like a slave to your desire. So this hyper focus thing is about getting interested in something and that thing gives you pleasure. And that's why you're hyper focusing. Yeah. By just indulging in that, you're just a slave to your desires. You're just doing it because it's interesting. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it just takes over, it's not really good. OK, so just like. In life, I questioned why I was an atheist and why I believed what I believe. And that's what got me where I am now as a Muslim. Uh, in your day-to-day -day things, I like to think, why am I doing this? Why have I, why have I decided to do this this day? Um, and and basically, um, what was I saying? I've gone off track. So I've thrown you off because I've done something. There, no worries. It's my fault, bro. I shouldn't have looked. So uh, basically, it's about reflecting. So for example... The cameraman over here was talking about um, he, he's got the same thing. And, and during lockdown, he learned how to be a barber. And then it's about it's about going. So can I do anything with this? Um, so, for example, in lockdown, I got obsessed with making sourdough bread. It took me ages and it's a master. It like it, it's really hard to start it, man. Did it takes months. It? Got really good at it. And I was making loaves every like I was making loaves every couple of days and stuff like that. But actually, really, there's nothing I can do with that other than have a nice loaf of bread and yeah. give my friends loaf of bread. Get really fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I got fat during lockdown. I lost like I've lost a stone in a bit now. Oh, so really? alhamdulillah. Um, but yeah, um, but there's certain things that I'll hyper focus on. That that's like if I do this, it, I could be successful in something like the editing or like um, the live streaming or whatever I've done in the past that could be productive. So it's about going right. So for example, I I, I um, started a little e-commerce site gemsofislam.co.uk yeah alright and I, I sell a travel prayer mat and I got obsessed with it and I was like wicked I'm going to do this and I made the thing um, and and I knew that I was, my interest will drop in this you know how far can interest of a, a travel prayer mat go um, but I needed to, it all set up for when the interest drops it looks after itself and that's what I normally do so so for example um, this the only reason I stopped my stream that I was doing, the reaction weekly stream, was because of an external issue. Otherwise, it would have continued and looked after itself. Well, I know that I'm really good at streaming because I'm on. Uh, it's just what I'm really good at ad hobbing, ad uh, you know, ad hopping and and just t talking on the fly. I know I'm good at that, so I can really indulge in that and it be good. And then I can go, uh, bro, can you edit that and get the best bits? And it looks after itself. And all I have to worry about is that bit. Mm. And I set up this system for it to work. So that's what I normally do with things, you know. Um, there's And sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes I, like for Arabic, for example, got really into Arabic, learning the alphabet. You know, I couldn't believe that I, this guy that's dyslexic that looked at the arabic language i went there's no it just looks like squiggles and dots mate that's not a language to now i can read it subhanallah but it drops the interest drops and i didn't put a system in place and i've stopped learning and i need to get back onto it and and you know it, it it's not perfect every time but um when i say taming it um it's about being conscious consciously competent there's there's a there's a nice model that, uh, uh, that there's a nice model out there, um, psychological model that um, so you you become consciously competent at something. Let's say uh, every day when you go to work, you're you're conscious you're conscious of what you're doing at work and you're competent at it, you're doing a good job at it. Then you become unconsciously competent. You just do it like like um, like what's it called? It's like the back of your hand. Yeah, like it's just like um, auto autopilot, autopilot. Right. You're doing your job autopilot. I came up with the worst ones. That's Riding right. a bike. Riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Can you pass me my notepad, by the way? Sorry for what I was. So, um, so yeah, so you, you're going to work and because and you're doing such a good job, you don't have to think about it. You don't review it at the end of the day or you don't think about what you're doing on that day or whatever because you just do a good job at it. But what happens, because you're not um, conscious about it, you slip into unconscious compet incompetence where you start slipping at your work and stuff like that. And then eventually you're um, consciously incompetent. And then you realize and review. What you need to do is keep yourself consciously competent. And to do that, you need to review yourself every every day or review what you're doing all the time. So 
so you can control it. But when we're human beings, we can't always do that. And that's why sometimes things drop. So my advice, that's where it came from. My advice to, to the youth would be, is be, try and be consciously competent. Reflect on what you're doing and why you're doing it. If you're doing, re if you're really interested in something at the moment, like but being a barber, you just watch some, it might have, you might have just been on YouTube one day and something pops up and, and that looks cool. And then you start watching loads of YouTube videos about it. Then it turns into going on Amazon and buying a set. And then it's like asking your mates, can I have a go? Like, can I try your hair? We could just shave it after, you know, and, they, and but stop. Why are you doing this? Think about it. What? OK, I'm doing it because it's uh, every time I research this or look into this or buy something for this, it's gain, gaining me happiness. OK, so what do you want from this? If you were to step out of this um, emotional like enjoyment, what would what do you want for this? OK, so. At the end of it, do you want, I would actually love a barber shop. Cool. Okay, so how do we make that happen? Um, where, can when can you imagine not being interested in barber and having this barber shop? Can you do that? What happens then? Okay, so maybe I could hire start hiring people, and then I'd own that business, and then I can use that money to then go on to my next phase. You know, so be, reviewing yourself is a massive thing, and it's actually a very Islamic thing. Uh, we're taught in Islam to review your day of your good and bad deeds and repent for the bad deeds, um, and if you've had an argument with anyone or anything, try and sort it out before you go to bed. And it's the same with just day-to-day -day stuff, with dunya stuff. It's the same thing. It's amazing because it sounds like what your system is, ultimately, is having foresight and saying, okay, I know because of precedent what my habits are. Mm. My habits are that there's a high chance that I'll end up getting disinterested in this. Before that disinterest comes, can I uh, automate it? Mm. And uh, that's a great system because that then allows you to still fulfil the thing that you want to do it doesn't stop you from doing it but it kind of allows you to kind of balance it right yeah yeah I, I, do you ever feel like um when you have an idea of something that you want to do even even though you might even though you feel like okay i'm gonna lose interest in this very quickly do you feel like i i, I have to scratch this itch though i have to complete this for me to for me to i know that it's not gonna be something that i want to do long term but I just I want to, to do, do this right now, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah, exactly, and that's the, the bread thing, for Fine. example. And sometimes it is something like uh, sometimes because I can imagine you, you, you. Some people might end up being too hard on themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. If it's just a, like, yeah, I think that's a good question, bro. Because it matters. There's so many different subjects and things in the world. For example, bro, I got once I got into actually what happened in my first year of becoming Muslim. I really got into the idea of having my own farm. Right, yeah. I've done all sorts of mad stuff, man, because of this. So I'll, it first started with, um, like, uh, at the time, like, this is before I took Shahada, I moved in to a little flat with my girlfriend at the time. And we were like, oh, it's our first flat together. Right, we're going to buy organic f food from the market. And I was like, should we get some chickens in the back? And we got fresh eggs every... Yeah, cool. But then I was like, oh, okay, how do we do chickens? And it was a, yeah, cool one then. But then it got into, oh, cool, I can get that coop. And okay, what breeds of chickens? And I got into it and it was the bug. And it was the hyper focus. And this is a, an example where it went out of control and went too far, okay? So, because I didn't review it and I was indulging in it. And because it was such a... It was this subject actually um it wasn't positive okay Fine. ish there was some positive that come out of it but i got into it loads and i bought some chickens and it started from there got a coop and i was like i wanted to go to the next stage i wanted to hatch my own chickens so i looked into that i bought a hatchery from ebay it was like that big and um you could buy you could buy fertilized eggs on ebay Can you? yeah yeah and you just put them in and they're like out of six you'll get like one or two or three that will hatch and I was, I was buying rare breed and I was like right I'm going to sell rare breed hens I'm going to buy this box of 20 eggs or 10 eggs or whatever and um, and uh, five in the hatch I'll send them £100 each to, uh, and then I just got like that and I was like I love duck eggs should I get a duck yeah <laughs> ducks and they ended up with a, and I lived in a like it was a it was a, a semi-detached house. It's in Oxford, so it's really expensive rent. So we couldn't have that semi-detached house. He, The guy converted it into four flats, and it was a tiny, tiny little place. But no one used the garden but me. And I was like, oh, kid, I've got a massive garden. So, And it, I just went mental. I, bought, I had loads of chickens. I had loads of ducks. I had um, quails. So I had a little cage of quails in for quail eggs and quail meat. I had r meat rabbits. Wow, I went amazing. mental, and I had this section, and it was wicked. And, and that was my hope focus, right? right. I 
became a Muslim in that time as well. And I had neighbors that were Muslim and and because I, I noticed them <laughs> like, like, like beard, hijab and stuff. I was like, oh, so make them. And then they used to start buying eggs from me and that was cool and things. Um, but but th- but I was like, well, I can't go. I want to go further on this journey but i can't because i haven't got land so i'd love to have a farm or a small holding and then looking at it it's like it's too expensive i can't do that so what can i do to achieve that later in life so i went to agricultural college bro i just quit my job went to agricultural college for a week for a year thinking i'll learn all this stuff and then later on i can get a little small holding yeah but that was the worst decision i ever had did in my life bro it was horrible um, because <laughs> it was in the middle of nowhere with no Muslims about. And um, I had to live apart from I got married to my girlfriend at a time that we had in a car and uh, we had to um, be separated. The Islam thing wasn't easy. We ended up splitting up at that point And it was like, oh, it was all hard. Like every, they called me Ben Laden. Oh gosh! Really? <laughs> so it was rubbish. And I was it was full of like 16 year olds that just finished school. And I was like 23, 22. Um, and and I was like all serious about it, and they were messing about, and then realizing that I'm I just jumped into this for a motion. I'm actually doing a course on industrial farming when I want a little organic halal small farm. There's a there's a there's a farm in Willowbrook. Uh, it's called Willowbrook Farm. It's in Oxford. Okay, Oxfordshire, just outside. And they're a halal small holding farm. I think I've heard of it. Yeah, them. they're brilliant. And that's what I used to go around there. I uh, and they actually offered me a job before. And I said, sorry, I'm going to college instead. It would have been better for me to go there, to be honest. But never mind. So I come back from that. Uh, went back into my old job at a tattoo place still. Um, and and it's like that full on just wasted a year of my life. <laughs> oh, God. In le- unless in the future, inshallah, Allah gives me some land. I've got a bit of knowledge. I can start again. And it, I still really want chickens and stuff, but we haven't got. I, I haven't got a garden or anything now. So you know what, Ben? I can I personally say <laughs> it's crazy, ben, isn't it? Say, that is an amazing story. I know. I absolutely loved hearing that story. I've got more. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got all day. Yeah. Um, secondly, I I, I think that uh, there's so much positivity out of having a personality that pursues um, your interest within reason, right? Mm. And and because what it does is it separates you from the 99%. And 99% of people, they follow the structure that's given to them by society or by schooling system, by universities. And it's people like yourself who says... I've got an idea of that could work mm. and actually I'm going to go all in. And I think that, yes, of course that could go too far. And if you, if you're saying that now you have the perfect balance where you're able to tame it. And so you're able to know when to let that run wild and when to reel it back. Yes. Yeah. Then I think that's a perfect thing because now you could do stuff like say, okay, is now the right time for me to go freelance mm. and work for myself. And you could do that, but you could do that knowing that yes, there's still a small risk, but, um, uh, but I know myself enough to know that I'm not doing anything really dangerous yeah, yeah. and, and like, they're sacrificing too much and obviously things like having a child and stuff like that help with those like risk management risk assessments <laughs> um, uh, I say that because Ben was just outside <laughs> as I was filling out a risk assessment yeah, it's interesting um, so I actually think it's, um, uh, it's amazing and I, I, you know, I can relate a lot to it because um, so in university uh, my housemates had said uh, mentioned before they were like we think you you have adhd and obviously it's just like a bunch of friends like diagnosing a friend right mm. and um um simultaneously uh i was taking uh this uh study drug right <laughs> I've mentioned this before. I shouldn't be saying this, uh, but uh, I, I remember checking it with. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not gonna you go got into a halal certified. No, 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 no. At the time, I was at USY. Well. So I, yeah, I was thinking, yeah. I'm not going to mention what drug is because I don't want to um, like guide people to it. But at, anyway, this drug, it turns out, um, is also given to people who have ADHD mm. to kind of tame, like as a kind of like a mood stabilizer, right? And Man, this was like epic, <laughs> really? and I was able to focus a lot more on things. Wow. And I wasn't like, and and I felt like there's a part of me that's like solved, right? And um, it's not good for long term use, and I don't take it anymore and stuff like that. I didn't get it first on my dissertation, so uh, and <laughs> I should mention that. Okay, I'm gonna stop because I do, I do not I don't do drugs, guys. Although this was a medically 
uh, certified. Yeah, yeah. What? Anyway, I'm going completely off topic. Point in that whole story was that I, uh, my course mates, my housemates felt like I had ADHD. I'm not claiming to know what it's like because I don't want to de. Um, I don't want to. Yeah, do it just or like desensitize uh, a very serious diagnosis because I know that a lot of people have struggled with having ADHD and we, you know, laughing about some of the it, it, some of the kind of things that you've uh, gone through together. But at the same time, there must have been times where it was very challenging because you've gone down a, a rabbit hole and stuff like that. So I don't want to make a. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a mockery it's, of it. Yeah, yeah. The reason I say I, could, I feel like I can relate to parts of it is because um, we mentioned their family. Uh, you know, you have a, a wife and a kid, a long bird. Is it one one child you have? Yeah, we've got another one on the way, inshallah. Oh, long yeah, bird. little boy. Yeah, at, at Eid it should be. So oh, very soon. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I know. It's, it's, time for it's, you a, right good, it's a good time to go self-employed, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Mate. Do you know what? Though? It really is, I think. Anyway, uh, so my wife, right, she is amazing. And she's also noticed these traits in me. I've never gone to get myself to I don't. Yeah. I don't claim to have... Um, uh, I don't. I don't claim to like like self diagnose or anything. But um, it's funny because when I have an idea, it's got to a point now where she will say that off. Oh, it's another one of Hazel's ideas. Yeah, yeah. But she doesn't necessarily say it in a patronising way. But she says it because she knows that I get ideas. Here we out go of, again. But I, that I have to scratch that itch. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. point, and that's Big why time. I I'm the same. Yeah, I, I have to see it through. And yeah. so it happened recently when. Um, Literally about two days ago was the last time it happened. And I, I I was working from home that day and I walked into the living room and I said, I said to her, I'm thinking that I want to start a Telegram channel. She's like, what even is that? <laughs> I was like, well, I like communicating with people who support the Freshly Grounded journey. And I can appreciate that a big part of the Freshly Grounded journey is the Freshly Grounded brand. But also a part of it is that people followed me on my journey mm. and seeing the behind the scenes of Freshly Grounded. And sometimes I don't feel comfortable sharing everything on Instagram because on Instagram, the problem is you put something out and everybody can view it. It's yeah, like what we were yeah. discussing earlier off air about the internet being one big room. Mm -hmm. And when you put something out, everybody gets to see it. And sometimes you just almost want to show the people who, who show love, you mm. know? And so I thought, if I have a Telegram channel, you have to opt in for it. And by opting in for it, um, I am able to share some beautiful behind the scenes of Freshly Grounded and some of the struggles and yeah. ideas and thoughts. And I can do voice notes. But to people who have supported the journey all along. And so she was like, this is another one of his ideas. And, um, it's cause she, she, and then by the end of the day, I had created the Telegram channel, bought... Um, everyone on my telegram coffee <laughs> and i had i was so proud and happy with myself for setting this up right that's awesome and so at the end of the day we were sitting there on the sofa and i said oh by the way i started the telegram channel and she did not look shocked one bit she was like okay i was like you knew i was gonna do it didn't you she's like i know that if you have an idea you're gonna that's see it. it yeah yeah but i feel like allah has like she's so amazing i feel like allah has um prepared her for me with um, how she was raised because she often says that her dad is someone who when he gets something in his head he just has to do it yeah yeah and so there's no point telling him otherwise yeah yeah because he has to do it that, that's why I and so <laughs> I feel like the fact that Allah has like um, allowed her to be in that environment then she got married to someone who's like like that so like yeah. she's like kind of prepared for it but she's still used yeah. to it isn't it yeah yeah it's a long winded way of me saying like I suppose I can resonate with parts of that yeah I definitely know what you mean by scratch that itch. I, I'm doing actually almost the exact same thing at the moment with my job. So I make, I, I, I'm talking with someone. We're making Discord channel. Uh, I've heard a lot about this. We, we were thinking about that. For May, sure. it's brilliant. It's br I mean, so many different. Like we, The only reason I haven't done it for any of my stuff is because it's a lot of work to set up. Is We've got a really good brother, Dennis, or Gugabyte, his name is on, uh, on Twitter. So... Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but um, he's he's wicked. He does a lot of editing for us. Um, he, he he does a lot. Of, um, sorts out translation. When I say us, EF Dower, um, and uh, we wanted to kind of the, on our live streams, we get two K plus viewers at a time, 
um, and the chat can be mental. So we have people as mods, the ones that normally have been like like the people probably on your Telegram, like they've been there for ages, they've been loyal, yeah. they become moderate and they just delete all the hate comments or spammers, whatever. And then recently we went live at Speaker's Corner. I've got, I had this new idea of instead of just recording Speaker's Corner, editing it, put it out, why not give people behind the scenes? So um, you've got Anis with the cameras and stuff and then me with like a gimbal um, with a phone and we're doing oh, and, and, like, and we're doing behind the scenes sort of thing it was really cool but we got spammed like mm -hmm. literally someone just spammed a load of stuff and then we deleted them and then just a new account instantly and it was like ah oh, we i need to i need to like get the mods together so we can kind of tackle stuff like that or if someone someone emails in goes i've been banned because anyone could ban anyone if you're if you're a mod you could ban anyone on there we don't know what's happened we're doing a live stream and if someone goes oh i've been unjustly banned and stuff and if we're gonna look into that we, we've got to know who did it and stuff so we made it just for the mods and we're doing that at the moment and then i uh, then i'm thinking we've got a revert group right and i told you about a little problem that we had in that revert group it's literally just one facebook messenger group all in there at all different stages and i thought well maybe we could do a section for the new muslims we can then now i've got time to do stuff we can get people we can get a sheikh on there q a we've got um we can we can do voice chats where we can do courses we just have a laugh and play some games together or whatever um have different category like brand new muslim support or you know the, the old the old ones or the regulars so to speak i thought maybe we could do that next and then i'm thinking well there's a lot of people that support ef dawa by being a member or a patron or whatever then we can grow that we can make a channel for them and you know we can then talk to them behind the scenes a bit mm -hmm. like your telegram group so that's that so we're in the middle um, if this comes out and there's no it, there's no discord channel sorry like yeah. my hyper focus ended yeah. um <laughs> but yeah so so yeah it's, it's they're really good man because i'm in i'm in yeah, them for other stuff. other other things you know like gamer channels and stuff so yeah the muslim gamers league for example is um have you heard of that yeah you thing mm, he's um so i became like a content creator for them okay and they they're basically a discord uh, community but discord you can it's it's more than just one chat room you can have a lot multiple things going on it's wicked go for it man it'll be better than telegram it'll be better than telegram. yeah well I, I plan to keep my telegram for my personal kind of stuff because I, okay. I do, do you know what i like about it i like that it's like being in one big whatsapp group it's just one to many so i can send voice notes and stuff like yeah, that. yeah yeah but um for fresh ground i think we were thinking about discord yeah. and cream is in the he cream's currently in the midst of uh, researching it cool um okay let's get back to your story then yeah we, i've gone off on a tangent so that's why you got we, the we're at, we're 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 in the punk days now right cool right so you've left house you left your home you're working in the um tattoo place and um you're now living in a group kind of accommodation yeah it wasn't for long it was like a few months um and it was i didn't see it as this is where i live now it was like i'm just, just gonna do what, i didn't think about it i'll just do what i want like it's there just do it and then when when i just got bored of it i went back home and okay. i lived with my family so um and it's uh yeah it was it was it was an, an adventure i i talk a lot about it on um i did a i did an episode as a guest on rerouted before i, I like became a host on rerouted and f like um we talked a bit more about that in depth um it was a, it was a weird lifestyle mate it was like um it's almost cultish, really. Really? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's called a subculture. So a culture that happens out in inside another culture, like a punk. So that you've got a whole fashion, a slang, um, ideologies and all sorts and unwritten rules as well. Where if you don't dress this way, you're not a part, you're not a real punk or whatever. There's used to be things called weekend warriors because you like with the punks they want to detach themselves from society because they don't agree with it um but then what they were promoting was full-on debauchery like just going to gigs doing drugs getting uh, like getting drunk that stuff's glorified um and to and to, to possibly do that in this society is that is is like just living in a, you don't have to pay rent and living in this squat basically with other punks with the same ideology um and you're just doing you're just indulging in what you feels good and you know that's that's all it was it doesn't seem get, sustainable oh 100 percent not that's yeah no it's not it's not sustainable yeah. at all that is but you're, i'm a teenager i'm i'm into it i'm really like uh, you know i'm i'm around people with the same mindset because i lived in a small town so when i got into punk i was the only punk in the village right. yeah so it's a bit it must be a, a bit like um 
when someone becomes a Muslim in, yeah. in a village or whatever. But this is different. I'm st- I stood out like, and it felt like it was. It felt like I was in. This is the norm. I like you know. But but anyway, this was something that I did as a teenager, and then in my early twenties, uh, I moved. To, I moved to Oxford for the, the, that, that tattoo job, or, or it's like an alternative shop. Sold, sold all sorts, um, and because I could still dress the way I did and be me, sure, and do a job, and so I I I, I was in a bed sit where my mate had the same it was in the same building it was wicked I, um i lived in a little town outside of oxford so we just got a train um yeah and yeah just lived a young young man's life and then what like were the next steps to them from there um how, how did the, you I start finding the time out about that I, I um became an apostate of the punk religion okay fine so okay. when i left the punk thing was um when um maturing and learning how the world works a bit more um my beliefs um getting kind of debunked slowly the idea of anarchy and living out the system and you know making friends that you know normally i wouldn't wouldn't really like this person because they believe that or they do that but actually they're all right and you know and it slowly goes away and and the ideology is gone but the the fashion and the music is still there and i remember it was i was in my bed like i was in the town of where i work i lived and I was really not into the punk thing. I was, I had new mates as well because I moved to somewhere else and it just, it was a repetitive. You get, you'd work all week, you go out and get drunk um, and go to a gig and hang out with your punk mates and it done. And it was just, and the conversations were the same. Oh, F the system and all. It just, it was just, it felt hollow. And then I just, one day I had a rubbish night out with everyone and I just came home and I had a big mohawk at the time. Um, and I just was like, looked in the mirror going, what am I doing? And I just shaved my head um and um and i the next day i went to tk maxx and bought normal clothes and i literally didn't know what i was doing because i was for five years i wore punk stuff and i you know i didn't know what was trendy or whatever so i, I ended up actually dressing like a skinhead you know those like because because <laughs> it was quite because the skinhead and the punks were together like you'd have punks and skinheads like at, at, it wasn't a racist thing or anything that was back in the day um not me back in the day in the 80s and that, <laughs> 80s and that you think you yeah, uh, no, like, but anyway I, 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 I like shaved my head and i thought what what suits a shaved head so i got a polo shirt tight jeans yeah. and and it, it looked relatively <laughs> normal and stuff and um and a lot of my friends were like whoa what the hell and, yeah, and I kind of drifted imagine. away from that. Um, and yeah, uh, I just lived my life work, still working in that alternative place. I still liked the alternative stuff a bit. But I was growing up. I was like, you know, thinking about bigger things than 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 those little silly things. So really. this must have still been your early 20s because yeah, I'm yeah. assuming you became Muslim at 22? 22, I think it was. So yeah. you must have been before. Yeah, so this 22. is just before that then. Yeah, yeah. So so that, I, I did it. I think it was like... <clears throat> I must have been late 20 or 21, maybe. I can't remember, bro. But uh, yeah, it wasn't that much of a gap, to be honest, when I think about it in the long scheme of things. But at the time, I felt when I became a Muslim, I felt I left the punk thing a long time ago. I made it, I had that, I like got with that girlfriend and she got like with me when I was not a punk, but, uh, you know, I still had some of the personality traits there. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so it was this, um, yeah, I don't know what to say really. Like uh, it, when... It, it was the the doubting why I'm a punk. Prob- I, I haven't even thought about this. You've got a, what, you've got a, a, a groundbreaking thing. <laughs> a groundbreaking thought too. Yeah. So me questioning why I'm a punk, shaving my head and going, this is rubbish. Is probably that that experience is probably what made me then question why I'm an atheist, why I'm doing what I'm doing, why you know why why do I believe that my society's morals are the innate like morals of society, you know. Um, and that's probably what made me question a lot to then come to Islam. Does that make sense? So what did that look like then? Because you d- you don't just decide to become Muslim, right? Like uh, obviously no. uh, Hidayah is from Allah, but because um, it seems like a very short window now. So you're you're twenty twenty one now, but yeah. by twenty two you are Muslim. So what happened in that so, space? So, no, so uh, the, uh, me looking into Islam was when I was a punk. Oh right? really? Okay. I, I, I'm, when I when I moved out of that. Um, no, it was before. Before I went to that squat place, yeah, I worked at Burger King, like on the services, and some of them were Muslim. That was my first interact with Islam and stuff like that. I was a f- staunch atheist because that gave me, like, it, like in the punk s- scene, it like religion is like being a slave to people, and you know, it's a, a thing to control men and all that sort of stuff. So it was a, you ha- like atheism was a as a it was my belief system, and I used to love 
mocking religious people because um, you know what atheists like but like you know like well like, you believe in a sky daddy it was that and i used to like i used to love debating with people about religion i used to watch d- debates with re- um atheists and religious people it was normally a christian you know what it's like like if you have, you don't like debates do you so but um it was normally an atheist and a christian it was actually seeing an atheist and a muslim debate and then the muslim win in slowly i'm like what wait a minute what? And um, and it was about because normally when atheists mock religion, they're mocking things like miracles and things like that because they've got a naturalistic point of view. Actually, with Islam, there's a foundation and that is Tawheed. And that is not that that is like it's so solid. It's so solid because it also questions why I believe what I believe. You believe what? What do you believe then, mate? You just believe it all popped into existence, you know. And I'm and I'm uh, like when when I question myself about when I questioned myself about why do I believe that um, the universe always existed? There's no evidence for that, you know. It just suits my narrative, and then I kind of became more agnostic. This happened um, that when I, I became more agnostic when i started the like the farm stuff for example in that in, in that house and sure. um it was although i've been research i had i've been researching islam for years and years it, it was in the space of six months where i accepted islam and it got to a point where i when i was an atheist uh when i was agnostic and then i was questioning what you know what started the universe then what's this claim um and yeah it just it's it, it kind of slowly went to deist then 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 looking at the claims of i went straight to islam because i knew that the sources of information were reliable it's um it, it, you know the quran can be traced back to the prophet peace him the sahih hadiths the one of the best well it is the best historical documentation method out there it's amazing um and and uh yeah and it got to a point and this is where my story might be different to others a lot of people have an emotional um, reason for being a Muslim, and that's completely fine and normal. Mine was pure logical, and but it lacked sp- spirituality and emotion. So I struggled with my first couple years. But yeah, I I literally was like I, I logically was convinced that Islam was true and there was a God and he sent messengers because and the big things about that was that we believe is in Islam that God God has sent messengers to all nations and all peoples so there was a there was a messenger sent to the ancient Celts to the Native Americans and you can see within their like mythology or their pagan belief a foundation that is Tawheed okay and the, where, the narrative is that we're given Tawheed and us as men corrupt it and um, innovate and add things and oh that person was really pious the next generation starts asking that person to pray to god for him and then that person ends up being a god and then eventually the, the, the main god's out the picture and it's all about these like you know and you can see that happening with lots of different things um the idea of jinn uh, why is that in every culture and in, in history why is there this spirit? Like you could call it whatever, um, a ghost. You can call it a demon. You can call it um, the the ancient Celts um, believed in. Like it would now be translated to elves, not Lord of the Ring elves, but a creature that was the unseen in places like woods and stuff, and in abandoned places that would play tricks on you and do, you know things like what the heck, what and who who uh, w- Islam reflected reality. And it reflected the un, um, the things that there's a link within all all things like that. It it it's, it kind of um, answered those questions. And I'm going on a tangent, but there was a moment where I had to accept Islam or I'm a hypocrite. Because so I got two choices. I believe Islam's true logically. I I don't want to be a Muslim. Why would I want to stop stop drinking? Why would I want to do this? Yeah, but you have to. It's like people that don't want to go to work they have to get up and go to work yeah so it was either that or i bury my head in the sand and try and forget about it and keep going with my life but i knew it would come back all the time and i didn't want to be a hypocrite i also knew that by following this religion of islam or or accepting it then i'd kind of sink into the rest of creation so allah's created everything as muslims does that, does that make sense? Or in fitra? No, we're on fitra, but a bird is a Muslim. It's it's obeying Allah's plan to Allah, doing exactly what's designed. It's only two creations that Allah has created that have a choice to do that, and that's mankind and jinn. So as men, as women, we've got a choice to, to submit to Allah and obey him. And by doing that, we're 
joining in with the rest of creation. When we're not doing that, we're out of sync with the rest of it. And there's this inside us, there's this like emptiness or just feeling odd. And we cover that up with desire, things that, um, you know, like drink or um, things that are fun or whatever, family, loved ones. When that's all taken away again, you you remember that you're, you know, you remember you remember that there's something missing and that that is what's missing so i knew that by doing this i'm like this is i'm going to be in with the rest of creation does that make sense yeah so i accepted islam with grudgingly i didn't want to and i remember my first dua was cringe i've never done i never made like i i, I think i prayed to god when i was a kid because of sunday school and stuff and i didn't really believe it much then um but i prayed to god saying allah like i know you're there I don't know what to say really because you know already know what I'm thinking and um, you know that's how it felt. It's really weird. So so my first like year or so was really hard as a Muslim because I didn't really want to do it and I was forced like kind of forced myself to do it and it was bringing a lot of hardship in my life because of being Muslim. Um, a lot of my friends, half my friends disowned me, um, and the other half that were disjointed. Obviously, I had a girlfriend I was living with in a house and that was she didn't like religion, you know, and and so that was really awkward. That became a thing we didn't talk about. We did in a car for, and she did it for me, but she hated it. She hated every moment of it. Um, she brought her family, her mum and her um, grandma, just to make sure she's safe. Like that's her mentality uh, about it. Um, it was horrible, man. And it was hard. Uh, I didn't get on with any of the Muslims. I'm, I just got literally a year or two ago. I was a punk like down a punk squat like gigs and drugs and rock and roll and all that and now i'm in a masjid or i'm in a, a pakistani man's house on the sat on the floor eating eating, eating eating like what's going on yeah like what's going on and i can't get on i didn't know any like people my age that were muslim so it was really hard and actually i don't know if you know this i used to actually i actually went into the quran only islam okay do you know that yeah yeah yeah? Quran, yeah no no did you know that my story like, i didn't know no. that you know yeah so um, I, I kind of I went to an IA retreat as well uh, uh, in my first year um, and again it was like it was really hard being a 22 year old remember what I said about being consciously competent yeah. when young, younger you are the harder that is and and like it's hard to um, give up it's hard to give up your desires when you're young it's really hard to do that and I was giving up a lot and I wasn't getting much out of Islam um, with spirituality or anything because I, like, I, I entered it logically um, and then stuff started coming up that I didn't know about like hadiths or laws in Islam that I didn't know about because I just read the Quran or watched a few you know videos and stuff so it made it harder for me so I was like to, uh, you know I looked into it and I and then I kind of convinced myself that this this hadith stuff was like you know it could be hearsay and stuff it's not you know it's not all of it's documented and you know, it, you know and, and it went down there and then i found and one day i found a class it said quran seminar right and i went there and i remember i went in there i remember seeing the guy running it and i remember him being on the telly like anti burqa and stuff like that okay but he's a muslim and it was a quran only kind of group and um i remember on the second they used to do a, a seminar every week like study the quran we all had different translations didn't know uh, anything about quran only islam or whatever i just felt more comfortable as cups of teas and we we're on a table we we're not on the floor you know and the, half the people in the room were non-muslims and stuff it was like very liberal and that's what the background i come from so i felt quite at ease there um, and then I remember one day he we did a thing and he was talking about how silly the hadith is. And I was like, wait a minute, you don't believe in hadith? And he said, no. And then I actually was relieved. I was like, oh, now I can follow. I still be Muslim, but I don't have to do all these silly things or, you know, believe in this, this and this. Because I came from a naturalist ideology about atheism. It's not easy going from um, uh, then hearing certain hadiths or whatever about something. That's a miracle. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was hard. But because of that Allah took me away like and I stopped praying slowly and I stopped and I stopped practicing the deen the only thing I, I held on to was I didn't eat pork and I didn't commit shuk so I, it, I wouldn't open fortune cookies or anything like that I wouldn't have like I wouldn't you know allow statues or, yeah no I wouldn't have a bacon I, I that was how weird is that there was that's the thing that's that was the little tiny thread that I was holding on mm. to and I just let, live, live my life as a non-Muslim for like four years. Um, and then it was, 
uh, like I used to um, play computer games while listening to stuff on YouTube. And one day this thing came up about um, a seek. Uh, it was like a seek thing that like just come, you know, on the recommended feed. I don't know how it come up. I was like, oh, what do seeks believe? That's quite cool. And I was just listening to it. And then it came up to the next video at this seek at speaker's corner. And it was Mohammed hijab having a debate with a seek. And I was like, that was my little introduction to Islam again. And then YouTube recommended me loads of speaker's corner videos give it two months of what I was binge watching them listening to them and I was like it was reminding me all the reasons why I was a Muslim in the first place felt guilty as hell it was horrible and I remember going oh no I'm gonna have to, oh god I've got to do this Islam thing again and then I was like I don't I'm scared to take the jump man I've made new friends since that don't know I'm a Muslim you know <laughs> So I um oh gosh yeah. yeah so I talked to I talked to um I just picked three of my good friends that I thought thought were intelligent and kind of said look bro I they knew I used to be a Muslim but we didn't go into it I said look I'm gonna lay out m this belief system right and the reasons why it's logical to believe in this if you debunk it I won't go down the path and I just laid it all out the foundation of um the idea of that that the, we th that this universe is dependent on something okay the foundation of it was started and it uh, be because it started like you know what something had to start that outside of the creation and all that sort of stuff uh, the idea of tawhid oneness of that thing and its attributes it has to be this thing that created everything has to have a will and da -da -da -da, all that sort of stuff for it for this to happen then the idea of this if this thing created everything he also knew that we were going to be intelligent beings so it would have interacted with us and then that then it goes on to prophethood and i just laid it all out and they went i can't and they couldn't pick a hole in it well so they must have been really sincere mm. to 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 with an open mind listen to it and not come with preconceived ideas yeah because yeah. i imagine th that it's difficult to listen to that and although the fitra recognizes it um the shaitan the nafs the desires make you want to go no no not about what about this what about that and so it would take a very sincere person and if there was three of them like you say or, or two or three of them two or three sincere people to really listen with a sincere mind and an open heart and then go Actually, we can't debunk. Yeah, that. can't debunk it. It's not. There, it was the attitude. It's not for me, but like, you know, I can't debunk it. Go for it, bro. I'm still your friend. And you're right. Like, uh, it was three people. One of them, um, like, agreed with me at the end, but didn't realise that meant I'm going to take the step and become a Muslim. And when that happened, he freaked out. And and we, like, we mates still, but it's not the same. Do you know what I mean? But the other two, wicked, really close friends. Um, yeah. So. And it was a lot of EF Dower videos I was watching. And so I, how old were you at this point, just so we can get an idea of the timeline? I think it was at the time Jordan became Muslim. Okay, so, so that maybe I three, four years ago? Four, five years ago. Okay. Maybe. Had you met Jordan at this point? No, okay. no. So what? The, the, I'm on my own. I, d I haven't gone to the masjid yet. I haven't started praying again yet. And I'm like, well, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to make the jump. I remember messaging EF Dow because I heard they've got a revert group or whatever. I saw it on on an... In, it, they Do you know Martin, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, me and Martin. Yeah. You know, I, I met Martin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, know, I know you know Martin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I he's in study, the group. I used to study in Cardiff. Yeah. But I hadn't met Martin at that point. And then I went back to Cardiff and I met Martin. Mm. And we had an amazing conversation, and I just, just, it just clicked down because he went, he travelled with EFDR to Umrah. Yeah, exactly. And that, what a lovely guy! He's right? awesome, man. I had him on. Um, How is he doing now? He's um, he's bar he's married now. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah. It, it was hard work um, because hard of work. culture and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Mashallah. So he's how's doing his well. kids doing? Yeah, good, good. good. Yeah, alhamdulillah. We oh. we'll keep like have a look on uh, our era. There'll be an episode out soon, inshallah. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. I don't no, actually right. click now. That's all right. I so just, I've probably taken you off. Uh, no, no, it's all good. Uh, I mean, I'm really on focus on this because it's like it was a big moment in my life, and it was like completely changed my life for the better. Properly, none of this messing about with Islam. I agree with it, but it's hard. Um, so. So I emailed uh, I emailed EF Dower and they didn't reply for ages and it, I was basically w wanting them to like give me the excuse to start practicing but it happened they didn't reply they it happened on its own and it was one day at work I went early because I had to clean up it was like seven a.m. I had to do a few bits it was like a day after a stock check so I had to finish off bits and I was like just couldn't stop thinking that I'm I'm no Islam's true and I'm not doing it and obviously when 
you're living a non-Muslim lifestyle, you you need to have a ghusl, yeah? And <laughs> at 7 a.m., right, in a shop, no one's at work, and I'm like, I've got I've got to pray to Allah because I'm, I, 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 you know what I mean? I've, I've, I've went off the path and I'm coming back and I need to I need to make toba and I, so I went into the toilet right this horrible little cubicle toilet <laughs> and I put I took my top, like top off and put it on the ground and I got a little jug and I just I just did a rustle like stood there naked in the toilet <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I tapped myself down with um, paper towels and that jumper that I wasn't going to wear now, you know. And and I prayed to Raqqa and I I ask Allah to forgive me and get me back on the Dean. Wow. A week later, EF Dawa messaged me and they joined and they put me in the group and stuff. Um, and um, so there's a, a member of EF Dawa that really helped me through some of my theological problems that I might have had still. I, I know Islam's true, but there's bits and bobs that I need to sort out. Of course, yeah. Um, and that was Dr. Imran. He's been, he was amazing, right? Um, and it was because of this Quranism thing, because I felt at home with the, in that that culture, sure, what you call sure. it. And I was still conflicting. Like, what is it, you know, that some of the arguments and that. And it, it, it like, to talk to me through it, I went really deep into the hadith. I really studied it, not studied it officially, you know, but really well. Um, and 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 that 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 Quran est thing went and it was on the dean properly, alhamdulillah. Um, and yeah, been really strong for like four or five years now, I think. Um, then yeah, and then because I, I was one of the revets that needed help in the EF Dow revert group that we got, um, and then I got established and stuff, and then end up helping the new Muslims come along, wow. like when they've gone off the path bit, send them private messages, and then eventually they offered like, do you want to help us out behind the scenes a bit, you know? And and that's how it all started, and that's why I'm sat here now because I know people, and that's it. <laughs> wow. Subhanallah. Uh, how Allah plans, man. Subhanallah. It's an amazing story. You know, before the episode, you said, oh, I, you know, my story is not that interesting. It's just, you know, basic story. And it's so interesting, honestly. Yeah. And it's always interesting hearing these stories. And in fact, they're quite inspiring, these stories, because there's gems and important parts of the stories that perhaps for you, it was because it was just part of your story. Uh, it's the norm mm. but for others it's inspiring or it makes you fix up or think about things yeah. something as little as you being in the shop and deciding that you need to make Toba now is something that somebody might be listening to that and say and as they're listening to it going you know what I need to do the same right now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. like not even like tomorrow when I go, you don't know you know like I remember when I I, remember, I don't know if this is a true story or, or, or what right but when I first started practicing I heard this story about this sister apparently it was a really famous story about this sister who um, I think maybe went to London Central Mosque or, or, or a local mosque said I wanted to become Muslim and that she, she took shahada and started wearing hijab and they said to her um do like take things slowly basically like don't worry uh you've got plenty of time to kind of get get into things and she said no if i just become muslim i want to do it properly and she put on her hijab i don't want to like even have yeah a moment like uncovered and then she stepped out and ended up getting one over and died no and she way. died in hijab yeah and i don't know because i heard this story years ago right and I don't know if somebody now, because I can't remember where it was told or how it was told, and I don't want to fall into uh, tail carrying, but I do remember very clearly being told the story. Uh, and that story affected me a lot, man, because it made me think, you know what, it's true, we don't know what's going to happen yeah. in one hour's time. Yeah. And so when you get an idea in your head, you don't go, oh, when I, when, like when I finish work or, or whatever, you go... Islam takes priority in everything. Yeah, yeah. And if that means that this has to suffer or this has to suffer, Islam has to be a priority. And uh, there's so many times in our lives where it's a bit easier to do the non-Islamic thing or it's a bit easier to delay something or it's even it's easier not to pray right now. Yeah, yeah. Right? And uh, it's just never an excuse not to pray. And so that really impacted me and it made me speed up on certain things. You know, there's was, there was, there was parts of my life that I thought you know, eventually I'll clean that part of my life up and stuff. And then when I had deep the fact that you could die at any point, I thought, okay, it's now or never. Yeah. Those things. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about is how you initially took Shahada. How was that process? That actually, like, <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one. Um, so th there's a guy that um, does Dawa on um, in the city centre in Oxford. 
He's a really nice um, brother, mashallah. But um, I knew about him already and I already decided I want to be a Muslim. So I just thought I'd go to him. Um, in fact, one of my friends became a Muslim um, uh, like years before that. And he told me about this guy. Now, what the Is friend- Is that guy who makes YouTube videos? No. Oh, okay. Was there a guy in you? Um, like I don't know if he's an Oxford, but there's uh, a guy who makes YouTube videos of street da'wah. No, no. So it's 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 very passive. That's just leaflets. And okay. I, I, to be honest, um, when he, he gave me some leaflets, I took them away and I came back. So I kind of wanted him to say, do you want to take Shahada? Because I, I needed someone to, to like push me. Yeah. And they basically invited me around to his house. And again, like, what, what am I thinking? Because I still got, um, I've still in my head got some of the, um, what's the word? Like the preconceived prejudice. I've got, I still got prejudice with Muslims. We're, we're told they're really bad, like, oh, the extreme views and all okay. that sort of stuff. And when they're dressed, like when you, there's a difference when you see a Muslim in Western clothes or whatever. And then when you've got the full garb and stuff and it's like, I'm just going around this guy. I've never, never interacted with Muslims looking like this, like they're proper and I'm going to and I just did it and I just, I just yeah. went to this house um, and there was two other reverts there um, that were my witnesses for the shahada we took the shahada and then they went right let's go to the mosque and I was like what no 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 and I got that anxiety and I didn't want to go because I just, just didn't feel like I don't feel at home here man this is why am I sat on the floor you know and and I had I used to dress like I didn't I, I still dress quite um, alternative then but not anything too extreme so I had I got tattoos here I used to wear a vest and like a you know it was all revealing and um, I and I was on in the car on the way and I was like and, and I was like is there anything I should know before I go in and then one of the brothers went well it might be good just to um, like kind of cover your tattoo mate I didn't know tattoos are haram or anything then and I was like oh okay because I was quite submit submissive I wasn't being rebellious and then the sheikh was like because he's a sheikh um, the guy that does dawa, um, may Allah bless him. Um, and he was like, "No, they got to, they got to see that people are coming to Islam from all walks of life." And it was just driving. Be yourself. It looks uh, like yeah. he was driving a bus. Was really? he? He's a very yeah. big steering wheel. He's got there. <laughs> yeah. um, so I went in. I can't actually remember the actual. Um, I remember the car ride. I don't remember the actual salah. I did salah there. I didn't know how to do salah. I knew the movement, and that was it. And then I was like, um, I, and I don't remember it. It's just a, it's just a blur because I was so anxious. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's how I, I went home uh, with a little starter pack and a little prayer yeah. mat hat in there, little Zamzam water, and I just came home and I just went to my girlfriend, become a Muslim, like because I because yeah, I'm known for these phases. We've talked about it, right. so I just thought she'll she'll understand. I, I didn't think it was a phase or anything, but it was like me making rash decisions is normal. Right. Um. So and I just didn't think that that would be a big surprise for her, and I was like, yeah, I'll just become a Muslim, and she was like. Oh, okay, <laughs> and that that was the that's where it started, man. But yeah, that's how I took shahada. And when I when I joined the EF Dawa group after like returning back to the Dean, I didn't know whether I had officially left Islam or not. In my head, I've never left Islam. I just stopped practicing it. We all, we all got brothers and sisters that don't practice the Dean, a bit like that. And I was like, what's the difference between just because I'm white, that means I've apostated. But when you're a, when you're a, um, like a brown lad in a called Muhammad, no, he's always a Muslim. It's not a born thing. So I was like, I don't. No, I don't, like I stopped praying. I went down this Quranist route, and that's dodgy. Um, so I just, I just said my shahada again in on the group, like on the voice chat sort of thing, just in case. So I don't know. I may Allah like forgive me for the for that that past, but uh, yeah. So that's what that's, an amazing story. Yeah, man. Alhamdulillah. What do you think, Fawaz? <laughs> Fawaz is always here for the because we sometimes Fawaz produce the episodes and other times I'm like doing the switch for myself. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but it's nice not. Doing but he stuff. seems to be here for. It seems like a lot of people here for the <laughs> powerful stories. Like, okay. The last you were here was for Hasties, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Subhanallah. It's, yeah. You hear a lot of a lot of the people that we know that revert to Islam or start practicing are from a are from a certain background. You can say maybe they come from the streets, they come from the roads, and mm. it's like inner London and yeah. whatnot. That's the people that we're exposed to. So hearing someone, first of all, hearing about the punk lifestyle, I had a lot of misconceptions about that lifestyle, and to hear like what it is they stand for and stuff was very interesting as well, mm. to be educated on that. And second of all, to hear that, it's just crazy how Allah guides people from all different it's walks of life. That yeah. like some people see Islam as just, it's just meant for one set of people. Yeah. It's meant for the ethnics, it's meant for this. It's just like Allah literally, he's, he guides people from all different walks of life. And in different ways as well, because 
so th- this is you know when I said I don't like saying the revert story it's not because it's not interesting it's because everyone expects a uh, Nasheed in the background uh, <laughs> like oh it's so good and no it was horrible it was really horrible yeah. it was hard I didn't want to do it and, and it's because I accepted it fr- through um, logic and reason I'd say uh, intellectually maybe so when, when um, would you say your, your the spiritual side of yeah. stuff kicked in do you know what there's 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 certain moments in my life um in the kind of first year or and two, or two of being muslim there's certain moments when i wasn't practicing and i knew i should come back and i kind of like you know like looked up in the sky I, I, no one will believe this man i remember i was like what do i do and stuff and then no jokes and i i, I don't tell people stuff like this normally because it's subjective and when kind of conveying islam i like to use objective things that everyone can test so. i honestly the cloud had the shape of allah in arabic and i was like subhanallah what and i was like you know because i was having massive doubts whether like even god exists and stuff uh, uh, in some points i was like oh you know and, and it, uh, that i was like whoa even then though Allah's the one who guides, and I, I still didn't uh, get back on the dean properly. It was just up and down, up and down, up and down uh, on it a little bit. Stop it, you know. Um, but since this is where this is where, I, if I was to give a message to anyone that's kind of half practicing or not practicing or whatever, actual spirituality and contentness and all the cool fuzzy feelings they come with uh, obeying Allah's power to Allah. The more you do for His sake, and the more you leave that He banned. Or, or took away the more connected you get with a so lot once, once you submit yeah once, once, you, once and, you and you get those submit. moments where there, there you go that's the real you have to work for it you know it's not just you know anyone can go oh I, I prayed to Jesus and da, 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 and it felt good uh, loads of people claim that and it's easy it's like it's like just a dolphin dr- you work hard you pray then not every salada has to be uh, like oh I feel in it man sometimes it is just like oh man I'm not going to start I've got work in a minute yeah. uh, it sometimes is that but do it because that's what connects you to Allah's path. They're doing it even if you're not feeling it. Those uh, well, Allah says, if you walk, to, if you put take a step to Him, He'll walk towards you. You know, if you run, to, uh, if you walk towards Him, He'll run to you. You do those little things, and Allah will open up doors for you. So if, it, if anyone's not feeling the spiritualness, it's just do it more, and you'll feel it. Um, do you, you know? feel the love now of Islam, like in your uh, heart? Mate, next level, really? Yeah, it's next level. Le- the next level contentness. Like there's, it's just. I think it, it's there's there's the spiritual thing and there's the um, intellectual thing of the certainty, full on certain. Like and that's that's a muscle as well. Because people have problem of certainty, certainty, don't they? But l- literally no doubt in uh, like at all that Allah exists and Islam's true. And um, because of all the research I've done and all of the life experience I've had, it's just cert- the certainty is like, oh, no, you don't have to worry about that. And then you've got the um, spiritual side. The thing is, w- when the struggle comes, I know it. I'm just going to get rewarded for it in this life and the next, you know. And sometimes I might still be at a loss in this dunya, but spiritually I'm more developed. And, it, and it, you know, like, it's awesome. And in my life, like... I don't like to focus too much on dunya stuff. Basically, anything I've ever given up in this dunya, Allah's replaced it with something better in the dunya as well as, inshallah, the akhirah. So, so I went from um, like having a relationship with someone, not even committing, just girlfriend and boyfriend, and I left her for the sake of Allah, right? Because we we're still, you know, it was it was still functioning, um, and we I I left her. And now I'm married to someone, right? I've got kids. I've got kids, inshallah, too soon. And that relationship's just next level. Like, that's actual what, what Allah designed a relationship to be. Things that are good in life, um, especially within Islam, they are a struggle. The, 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 and especially living in the West, it's even harder, yeah? They are a struggle because you've got your desires. Sometimes the haram things or, you know, uh, are easier to attain or you get more dunya stuff. But actually, when you put the effort in and do it the correct way, and you do you play it through for the sake of Allah, and when I say for the sake of Allah, I mean you're not doing it because you're going to get something out of it or whatever, and Allah owes you. You're doing it because you're submitting. You're a Muslim, and that's what you're meant to do. Like that's how we fit into this universe. You do it for the sake of Allah. Allah will just give you something better. So I had this girlfriend. I was with her nine years, bro. But we never got married. We never got our own house. You know, it was like a it was like a pleasure thing. 
um, and then to doing a proper Islamic um, going things Islamically and I got the best contentment from a family I could ever ask for may Allah like may Allah bless her and, and my and my children I mean so it's, it's awesome so that's an example of like Allah making things easy what, what's your little one called Aisha Aisha and, and what, so what has it been like being a dad um, it's amazing do you know what when, before, when I knew she was pregnant I looked at some of your videos I, I told you over WhatsApp oh you said yeah yeah so because you did some series like episodes and, and, and I got really talked. passionate about fatherhood yeah. when I was yeah. giving her first yeah. and that, that helped I made me like out. a one hour video on everything a father needs to know in my head I was that's the one. in hindsight quite that's arrogant the one. And, uh, no no it's good it helped me some of the things that I didn't have to go through like you or some of the things that you recommended down below because you did like a, there was an Amazon wish list yeah so it was brilliant man and oh. I, I needed that because I was like a western guy I just got married like we ha we decided to have kids quite early in the marriage because of our age we don't want to be like old parents you know so we're like we want to have kids but that's what we want let's do it um, and and remember that one where you sh you like had to shave the head and yeah. you were asking your mate that's a barber that I did the same I went and bought out some I bought some really nice razors yeah. and it was the same and it was like there's a picture of me shaving a head oh. bless and um, yeah so it, it really I think um, I think there should be more like said in, on the Muslim media about about being a father about um, children and and about marriage and and what that's like and stuff and i know we don't want to talk about private matters too much but i think it's helpful because what how it helps is when someone may be attempted by the haram route or whatever or you know like a semi in and out with halal haram with relationships it's hard to see what it's like on the other side yeah because you're not experiencing you don't know what it's like you're literally going to marry someone after three months of knowing them or whatever um, and you just there's that doubt there span of light it's the best system yeah. it is the best system it is, it, yeah. it, as, I'm going to be honest you're worried about getting like I'm talking to that person now you're worried about getting married to someone you've known in three months but you're happy to go to a nightclub you've met them five seconds and, yeah. and, and have relations and, and then be girlfriend and boyfriend what's the difference so, but this time you get to actually tick things through logically do we match and like have the halal dates you know meet up with a mahram or whatever um, and have a coffee get to know each other um, and that's brilliant and that works and as soon as you know you want to get married to this person stop messing about meeting them still right stop messing about chatting with them on you know you need to get married now because you're doing it for pleasure now not for to see if that that's uh, that's going to be a marriage opportunity it is a marriage opportunity we've sorted it that's what I did and it worked anyone else do the same yeah the Islamic way is the the only way it is the best way and the only way yeah um, what we'll do is we'll take a quick pause I need to pop to the loo yeah no worries yeah, the camera's over here so uh, that comes over here that works perfectly yeah cool. so we'll take a pause some water as well yeah perfect I'll grab you some Fine, so we're back from our break and uh, we've in that time ended up actually praying Zohar. So we're completely off, um, we're completely off our equilibrium. Yeah. We've forgotten completely what we're talking about. Uh, but it's a perfect time to jump into the freshly guided game. Yes, let's, so do, let's do that. So I have, uh, no, this is an empty box. What did we end, what did we end it on? Uh, I think we ended it on um, Was it? Ben talking about... This is going to be a weird transition. Mm. It's fine. Okay. They know. We've yeah. explained they now. They understand. Yeah. We understand. So Ben, here's one way I've not done it with a guest before. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you all of the cards and I'm going to tell, I'm going to say to you, choose your own question to answer. Mm. Okay. okay. Cool. Because, and you can look at them because... Um, do you want, do you, do you, go on, carry on. The reason is, is because I, uh, I think that sometimes by telling the guest that I'm going to ask them a question, it puts them under a state of unease. But actually, I'm going to say to you, look at the questions and answer whichever one you want to answer. Now, this feels like more than 100. So I think what we've done is we've accidentally mixed up two cards because there's about 300 cards here somewhere. <laughs> so I don't know what you've got here. That's all right. Well, I'll, 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 I'll pick, pick out some and I'll, I'll answer the best. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what you come up with. <coughs> Have you played the game before? No, I've seen it a lot. Have you got a copy? I'll go, I'll go, uh, make sure you leave with a copy. Inshallah, I'll yeah, love yeah. one, man. I would have given you Ramadan versions, well, but they're sold out. Oh. oh, that would have been perfect. Never mind. You got to get. You got to get there. You got to get there in time, Ben. I don't think I'm actually going to make any more of the Ramadan. See, that's the ex exclusive aspect of yeah. it. Right? Yeah, we'll do that one. That's a really good one. All right. Okay, so, uh, what steps could you take today? To get oh today I didn't read that bit yeah oh, let's do it anyway <laughs> to get closer to Allah what steps can I make today to get closer to Allah um, 
it's funny we're talking about Salah today um, I I'm struggling with concentration lately um, and I think it would be good also there's there's a basic so you can get into a bad habit so there's there's the minimum requirements of Salah we're kind of taught the sunnah way of doing it so you you know you say things three times you like do al-fatiha then you do another surah a couple of ayahs that bit's not obligatory but it's really highly recommended um and you know um saying three things three times you know you can only you don't only need to say it once and so on and sometimes when i'm busy or i i, I just do it i'll just do the minimum quite same with wudu. i'll just do one once every over so what i could do cl- get close to allah is even just one salah just slowly and properly and really concentrate on because on, having these chats that we've had today it helps me ground me and be thankful for a lot of for what he's given me and it's a good opportunity now and this is actually a lot chose me to to read that so i'm gonna have to do it now so sure. yeah I, I take that moment to be grateful in and put uh, make time for that salah really ponder about things and afterwards make dua and and thank him for everything he's done for me yeah, you know, that it's actually quite an interesting topic that you mentioned there because <clears throat> I don't know what it's like uh, for a revert or uh, even other cultures. But what I know from my culture and upbringing is that we're taught a lot of the uh, sunan uh, as if they are Far- like from yeah. the fara'id, yeah. And so growing up, I thought that dhuhr was... Four sunnah, four yeah. far two sunnah, two nafil, and that that is all fard. That's how you pray dhuhr. Yeah, and I was taught that for Isha it was four sunnah, four far two sunnah, two yeah, yeah. one like, like three one with her, two yeah. nafil. And I was like, and I was like, and so growing up. It, it seems like a mountain yeah forget it and right and so what i then um learned when i started practicing was that actually um you know the mi- what the minimum requirements of things and that's actually in some ways a a dangerous path to go down as well because then what happens is you start um own because you've actually built up a good habit growing up because you've you, it's the norm to pray your sunnah after Maghrib. It's in the norm to pray your sunnah before Fajr. Mm-hmm. It's the norm to pray Witr. And then what happens is, when you start realizing the minimum requirements, um, you start settling for that. And it's a tough balance to then build your way back up. Yeah. And I found myself falling in certain things because, oh, this is what, well, that's actually, this is not fun. And to be honest, it's good in, in, in many ways, in the sense that you shouldn't believe that what's not fard is fard because that's just not correct yeah but that doesn't mean that you go oh that's just sunnah so it's yeah. a really like yeah. it's a tough not, thing right yeah but it's about understanding why allah has made certain things farther than what and what's non-negotiable and stuff like that and so um one really good tip that a friend gave me is he started trying to get to the point where he could build himself back up to praying the sunnah mm-hmm. and so what he did is uh, for he would do this minimum requirements in the sunnah just to get himself in the habit of doing the sunnah and like slowly build himself back up. So yep. step one was okay. I'm going to pray all of the sunnah, but I'm going to pray them the minimum requirements so they're very fast, kind of just the fatiha, yep. subhanahu wa taala, and so on and so forth. Then he was like, the next step is to like pray with like the longer version and stuff like that. And then before you know it, you know you're because the ultimate goal really is to pray like that. It is to it pray is, yeah. the three witr, you know, just before. Uh, Fajr comes in yeah. Praying your tahajjad You know Praying And so on and so forth But it's about Using Tips and tricks Like um, uh, ha- Habitual Like you know that book um, The James Clear one the, What is the James Clear book About habits called uh, Atomic, Atomic, Atomic Habits, habits. Mm, um, it. Using Like the tricks in that book And stuff To build yourself Back up yeah, yeah. But it's an interesting topic Isn't it is I mean The thing is You remember you mentioning You, you mentioning that now Thinking that That was followed some a bet in in the past you've actually skipped solar i'm not saying that like the expose yeah, like because yeah. knowing that you've got so i remember when looking for a wife um one of my requirements is minimum four to, uh, five times a day and uh this one sister 
she um di- she didn't she was like i can't do it every like that every day and it's because of that she thought it oh, was really all and she was like at night I've, I've, i finish work at this time and then i've got to do this and i've got to do with her and i was like D- it, d- they didn't say it's six times a day prayer it's five times like that like ju- the, the fard is this and i think sometimes just skinning it to the fard helps those people in that in that position helps someone in an orc position like i the reason i do that at the moment is because of my old job where I am, I've literally got five minutes yeah. and and I've got to do will do I've got to pray and I've got to get back on the, on the job but now I'm in a position where Allah's made it easy for me to gain more reward What I, and I've just noticed this now yeah. as we're talking that I was saying about everything in life is is seizing the opportunities to do a good thing a test and I've just noticed now that Allah's given me an opportunity <coughs> to pray properly to pray how the Prophet peace upon him prayed um, and gain that hasana, gain that reward. Uh, so what am I doing, man? You know Do what's what I mean? funny is that I've got a really funny story, right? So because uh, remi- what you're saying reminds me of how Allah has made the religion easy for us. And there's so many things. The more knowledge you gain, the more you realize how easy Allah has made it for us to practice. Islam's not hard to practice, mm. and but there's lots of opportunities to gain further reward. Mm-hmm. Lots, and we should take them. Um. So there's a really funny story, right? So I, when I, I was like fairly new into like practicing Islam and stuff and I got a job in retail and I had heard about this wiping the socks scenario. I was like, great, I can like go and pray my salah in. Because I, when I started this job, I said to the, do you know the story? You mentioned it in the podcast. Before. Oh, have I? Yeah. I um, when I started this job, I said to the employer, I said, I just have one request. I waited right until it was time to sign the contract because yeah, there's yeah. four job interviews to get the job. And so I'd passed each stage and just before I got the contract, I had a pen in my hand, contract in front of me. I said, oh, just a great question because I wanted to save it to there because I didn't want them yeah, to stop me. Make, yeah. I said, look, I have to pray five times a day. And so sometimes that falls into thing and it takes me five minutes, but it's a requirement of mine. And he said, uh, which by the way is even like, not to say that I'm brave, but it's a, it's a, it's a brave thing to do to mm. say, because you know it could jeopardize job and so recommendation to anyone applying for a job you know mention it yeah be black and white and um and they said to me that's fine we'll just treat you like a water break anyway so i thought oh great i can quickly make wudu by not having to take my shoes and socks by not having to take my socks off basically and just make wudu and so what i used to do is um so simultaneously right as the months go on um i find it harder and harder to walk around the shop floor because uh, as I'm walking around the shop floor so much, I started getting um, an infection. It sounds nasty. Right? I got a foot infection. Yeah, it right. is what it is. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it, this infection was going on for a bit too long, months, right? And it was getting worse and worse you didn't and worse. Get seen, yeah. uh, and um, nothing was really helping or fixing it. And so one time I went to the doctors, and this is probably like my third time going to the doctors now, like because uh, you know, you know, they put you on a small steroid cream and then they increase the intensity and increase the intensity. And so I'm with the doctor now and the doctor says to me, just as like, I'm like leaving, we're done with this appointment, like we're putting me on a stronger thing. The doctor says to me, by any chance, do you just, do you put your socks on straight after um, having a shower? And then the penny dropped. And I thought, hold oh, on a second. That's what, I do. what I was doing, bro, because yeah. this is what having knowledge without knowledge, this is what having, like not getting full knowledge or, or, or studying does, right? I had heard that you can wipe your socks. I didn't know that that meant wipe the top of your socks. I didn't know the fit were having. <laughs> so well, I'm washing my socks like you wash your feet. I used to put his socks What's in the, the sink. <laughs> I used to. No, I wasn't putting oh, my socks in the sink. That's worse. Uh, yeah, it's worse. That's worse. It I wasn't putting my socks in the feet, but I uh, socks in the sink. But what I was doing is I was rubbing it wiping. Wet. Yeah, I was rubbing my wet hands mm. over the whole of my sock up yeah, to the ankle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the difference between that? why? What am I saving by doing so, yeah, that? Yeah, you're making Nothing. a massive I'm just, damp. I'm just hiding. making really damp socks yeah. at the bottom, and then when you're walking on damp socks yeah. in retail for eight hours, yeah, yeah. it's like friction and then that dampness is <coughs> causing an infection and so i was doing that on top of the infection and everything as well and so i said well so at the time i hadn't realized that i had i when she when the doctor said that i realized what i was doing but i hadn't realized that that was islamically not the right way to do it mm. so then what i thought to myself is i thought well why would allah allow me to do something that and give me a foot infection would give you a foot infection <laughs> right like essentially and so I just thought, let me read up about this wiping the sock thing. I'm doing something wrong, clearly. Yeah, and instantly yeah, yeah. I was like, there's something coming up doing right. Um, and then I read that you only have to wipe the top of the sock. Yeah. 
And it was a funny revelation because I was like, oh my gosh, like, and it was a lesson to me that don't just, l- like, you have to, as a Muslim, oh, oh, first of all, we should be trying to study knowledge forever. But secondly, at the bare minimum, you have to know the bare minimum of what you're practicing. Yeah. Like, if you're praying Salah, you have to know what's required of my Salah. Yeah. If you're working in, um, if you if you decide to be someone who wipes their socks, then you have to know the bare minimum of like what is the, how does that ruling work. Yeah, yeah. If you're someone who works in uh, a farm with animals, and a requirement of yours is to um, uh, clean the you know dirt of the animals, you for you it's fundamental to know if that breaks your wudu or what. You know, there's yep. for different things you have to know the fundamental thing. If you're in business, you should have a idea of the fiqh of business. And so on and so forth. So it taught me that lesson. But yeah, how funny is that? I've got loads of stories like that. But um, I think some most people appropriate. Most people go do that as well. Like they, you know, especially when you start practicing, right? If you either grew up as a, um, like in a Muslim household, but you don't practice, you start or a revert, you're gonna be in a position where you don't have much knowledge, but you've got a good intention. And I'd say don't feel guilty when you find out you do you've been doing it wrong or that way where you're praying isn't valid or whatever. Um, it's about uh, the the religion is based on intention, and Allah gives you those opportunities to learn, you know, and just seize them. Definitely, yeah. you do learn as you as you go. He you gave you the opportunity you by giving just you a big old infection. Infection, yeah. <laughs> just to backtrack a bit. Yeah, your question, your answer was that you want. It wasn't more. Uh, I want to do extra salah. It's more the salah that I'm doing. I want to. I want to do it properly and gain concentration. Yeah. How would you? Um, how do you plan to do that? Or any you are, tips on how someone can gain concentration? It's one of those things that I, uh, I've gone through a lot. So it comes up and down. I think we all do. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and and um, it's what helps me is learning learning what I'm what the salah is for again I know it's, it, we say Islamic reminders don't we and that's because we're re- literally con- we, we forget things as human beings we forget things we've got to constantly remind Allah dhikr, and we've got to remind each other of the religion and uh, re- I remind myself what the salah means what I'm saying in the salah why each stage what what am I saying to I'm literally like because it just becomes words especially if you're not Arabic speaking it becomes right. just Arabic words and, and it, even if you know the meanings if you're not pondered on them it, normally if you just it's take unconscious s- competence isn't unconscious it unconscious incompetence yeah and it, then yeah. you now I'm in conscious because of that that, conscious incompetence and then I've got to switch it over which makes the effort as a conscious competence uh, yeah spot on uh, I remember um, in my local masjid there was a um, there was a really good khutbah series on uh, concentration in salah it's on YouTube um, so I'm probably going to watch that and it's wicked and it goes through each stage and it's so in depth about the, and all it is is the c- concentration of salah and I m- remember when I said about sinking in with creation rest of creation there's one moment where he's like when um, when you're standing look at the place of, pr- pr- um, um, of uh, where you prostrate yeah so you're looking at that place and that's where you're that right in that moment where you're looking you're, that is where Allah wants you and that's what you're meant to do and that's where you're meant to be and by doing that, you're um, just as the birds sing in the morning and just as a, a, a tree grows from a seed, you're doing the same thing. You're doing what you're designed to do. And that's worship Allah in this manner. And mm. thinking about that is mental. It's yeah. crazy. It's amazing. Uh, and it helps with gratitude. It helps with certainty. It helps with the where you are, like what your place is in this world. Yeah. The dunya is distracting, man. It's, yeah. it's full of stuff. We could talk about, all, look, there's, especially in, we're in a first world country, we've got luxuries left, right, center, we take for uh, granted. But they're just massive distractions, aren't they, in, yeah. the, in the end of it. And the real point of this existence is it's a test to see if you obey Allah or not. I, I guess sometimes, so from, the, what, what, from that, I can get dependent on your situation. Mm. Sometimes it's not about acquiring more knowledge about salah mm. but sometimes going back to what you might have overlooked like the, yeah. the, the, the fundamentals going yeah. back to that and why we do it and how we do it and yeah. like the meanings of certain things that because you do something every day five times a day and sometimes even more that you can lose track of that so mm. it's like reminding yourself and get yourself grounded again yeah and it's all it might be that um, uh, it might be uh, you're in a position that I've, I'm going through my previous experience you're in a place in or something's happened and anxiety worry about something where your mind's not in the right place in anything right. and and um salah it becomes a job and that it is a job Fine. 
Um, but it's a job you can enjoy if you indulge in it. Um, and sometimes, you you know, you've got to be in a right psychological mind. Someone gave me um, some tips of some doing some sunnas beforehand, like putting on perfume. So smelling that nice perfume, maybe turn the lights down so you're not cl- like looking around, okay. looking at Alexa, seeing what time it is and stuff. Um, and really just t- five minutes of sitting down and, th- and just thinking about life. I'm thinking about Allah and, and and or reading the Quran before you pray to get yourself to in get that himself in the, yeah. in the right headspace. That is a good habit to do, and also the experience you have because of that that will become the norm again. And the only reason we come out of um, we come out of um, concentration in in Salah is because um, it slowly happens normally. It doesn't happen like overnight. It's slowly where we are talking about we stop doing certain things mm. and we do the minimum because we're busy and stuff, and it becomes a bit more empty. We talked a bit about. Um, Allah takes away Iman as a test as well. Takes away that Iman. So see if you still obey Him without that. F- the, the, the positive. When you feelings. get nothing out of it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it, like, I don't know. It's it's. They, I, I, there's there's a. I'm really proud of Muslims that stand in front of Allah and pray and get no spirituality out of it because they're doing it because they're obeying Allah. It's it's beautiful. Uh, But but we, but we kind of, and, and I know that's not where we want to be, right? We want to be feeling it. We want to be doing everything we can, but that just, there's a, as a Muslim there, it's in a, in the headspace where they're, uncertain or their iman is low or whatever but they're, they're still, still stopping yeah. and they're looking down and they might be thinking about dinner or whatever but they're doing it they're doing every movement a minimum requirement that Allah asks for and that's beautiful it's that's just what, making the conscious effort yeah. just trying I think doing good well. deeds as well helps with iman as well mm. like um, charity like you, you, there was a point where um, you know I was doing some extra money uh, like side hustles and that I was gaining uh, extra income and enjoying it and I never thought about like giving back as well and I was like oh actually and it was Ramadan time at this this one point and I gave quite a lot I gave so much it hurt me right and that was this isn't me trying to boast or whatever mm. this is getting across a message because of that Allah opened loads of other doors for me and it gave me such a good spiritual boost and it gave me a, a lot of iman and and happiness and and Allah make things easy. Allah says um, with charity, it's like it's like lending Allah alone. So if I feed the poor, it's not me feeding the poor. Allah gave me the means to give that money, and the reason I'm giving that money is because Allah asked me to. I, I'm, you, there's a there's a verse in the Quran, and I'm going to paraphrase again. I don't know it off by heart. Um, about being the hand of Allah, like every action you do, because it's for the sake of Allah, it's because it's what what He obey, He made you do by obeying Him. You're interacting with the universe, with the world, um, for the sake of Allah, and that's powerful. It's, and it just helps you spiritually, definitely. Mm. So, so doing more good deeds are, are like helps with with things like that. So, yeah. But for me, at the moment, it's because of bad habits that are well. Not yeah, bad habits um, that I I like, had at work about trying to pray quick, and then you get in the habit of doing that at Isha when you got the time. And now I've got a, I'm working from home now, so I've got no excuse at all. And this is that was an awesome reminder to 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 kind of work on that again. So I'm looking forward to that. You mentioned uh, Alexa. Do you are you do you have an Alexa? Yeah, yeah. Are you into sm- uh, smart homes? Um, I got it. I got it ages ago, and it's. And do you want? I just use it for cooking mostly. Really? Do, you, do you have the one that's um, just plugs into the kitchen? And it's like a. It's a really small version, and it's called. It's literally a clock, but it works as an Alexa. It's, yeah, it's like it. I think it's called e- Show Echo Show. Okay. So it's got a little screen, and it kind of shows recipes and stuff as well. Really? Yeah, it's cool. Oh, wow. It's good. I got it on a sale. We don't like. I. It wasn't worth the main price of it. It was on sale. It was worth that. Um, because for what I use it, we use it for alarms, reminders, weather, uh, recipes, and stuff like that. Do you think so. there's any smart technology that could be created that could help a Muslim in his lifestyle? Obviously, maybe not with worship, because we don't want to become in we don't want to become innovators in worship. Yeah. But like anything from a lifestyle perspective, smart tech that could benefit a Muslim. I always think about that. I don't know about smart tech, but I know that what what I feel there's a massive gap in within the Muslim media and and things is actual productive help for for the dean, because right? we get lots of 
gen- like reminders, it was generic advice and stuff like that. But step one, do this. Yeah, step yeah. two, do that. Step three, do this. Uh, like, there's never anything like that. I remember doing a um, a TikTok video about like how to stop, like things you can do to stop um, uh, to stop missing fajr. Yeah, because. It's a event like if you really boil down, it's a choice. You're choosing it. You, you might feel so guilty and convince yourself that oh no, I overslept. Well, not really, because did you actually set your alarm to the um, the max volume and put it over there so you'd have to get up and get it? Did you ask your dad or mum or your wife or your husband to, to throw water at you? Because it's you don't you, you you're, you're never you're never late for work, mate. Yeah. So why aren't you? You know, it's like and it, it was the first. That's the first stage. Except that's where you are. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. It's not because this and that and it, using excuses on day of judgment. It'll be obvious. You just reminded me <clears> of <throat> when I was younger and my nan would throw water on me and you're sleeping. And at that point time, you're like a deep sleep, isn't yeah. it, at that time? <laughs> and she'd only do it like flick a bit. Yeah. It would feel like the ocean. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sleeping, deep sleep, and I would just go <gasps> like that. <laughs> and then I just see, like, I wake up, I see my nan's face like, wake up for my chair. I'm like, why is it? And she like heard that you should do that. Like, like what? And at that point, you're like, and they're like, no, that's good. I should be. It works. Oh, yeah. it? <laughs> do you watch the Sunnah? Did you know that yeah, the, yeah. the Prophet peace be honest, used to do it to the wife, his wives? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Panallah. Yeah. So, um, so that that's stage one. Then stage two. What can you do to start yeah, getting that's up? Good point, man. And we don't have anything like that. Um, much. There's a book called The Productive Muslim. That's yeah. quite helpful. But again, it's um, uh, and there's a lot of cool stuff for Ramadan like that. You yeah, know, Ramadan is, yeah. planners like do this, do that, do that. Loads of people function like that. So why isn't there anything like that? And I've always wanted to fill that gap. And I, I kind of intend to in the future now. I've got more time. Um, I I, but I, I normally do that for the new Muslims that I support. You know? I wonder how AI can help the Muslims. Because again, it's such an intricate thing. Because with everything, you'd have to get it checked from an Islamic scholar. Mm. Because you don't want to fall into changing the way worship is done or anything. But if there was a... I wonder how AI can help... You know, like how microphones didn't exist and how microphones exist and then when they're praying in the in the mosque you know my, you the imam uses the microphone and they can be heard on the speaker so I'm, I'm talking about that kind of level right it's yeah. like a very safe level I've got lots of things that I think would be good for new Muslims or new newly practicing Muslims that don't know how to pray and stuff yeah like um, there's there, there's this kids um, there's this prayer mat for kids called my salah prayer mat or my salah mat okay. and it's an interactive one it's like it, it, you put it on the floor there's loads of symbols on it and you press it and it'll tell you like it'll I've start seen that, like, yeah. yeah so that. things like that for new Muslims would work it's someone invented um, you know the, the, like how to pray a booklet but printed on a prayer mat so you can literally go right yeah, like that, that. Well. so that, that, that's yeah. wicked things like that would be good like um d- proper azan clock you know you got your azan clock but it's kind of doesn't go off and you have to keep changing but they've got it. apps for that now yeah but even then it's not your local masjid one it's always different and it's yeah, like yeah. oh what's why is it different and if you don't know why there's different times in different schoolers for you know it gets complicated but there that someone could up that level and go right that masjid and it will just do it for you and you don't have to worry about it. you don't have to reset it like uh, like um how our phones know to change the hours when the hour goes forward and stuff it'll be like that, for, that yeah that would be good i can't really think of anything else though um i i i think i'm talking one level of um, you know how if you wear an Apple Watch and it detects that you haven't been, you haven't stood in an hour and it's not good for you. So it's like, hey, like remember to stand yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like imagine <laughs> if AI could like detect that your iman is low. Do you know why I'm laughing? Why? I, when I went to a new Muslim retreat with Ayera, they do this team building exercise where you kind of got to make up an invention for Islam, okay. like to help the Muslims. And we made me and my group made this watch and what you're talking oh, about, really? where it detects whether you've made wudu or not. Right. Okay. So so you can be like, do I make wudu? And it'd be like, Bloom. no, you've, you you farted. Um, yeah. at three o'clock so you needed to make the oh wicked yeah. and it does all that sort of stuff. that could be the thing in the future do you know though. what I mean like again it's like a tricky <laughs> scenario to speak about but if we're having blue sky thinking you know it's, it's an interesting topic like yeah because it's not hard to imagine that there'll be a time where you know there was this documentary about this woman in Silicon Valley who um, basically frauded the whole of like the world but um, she was like the Steve Jobs of silica- of, of healthcare mm. and this invention that she created which turned out to be a complete um, scam mm. was that 
you, through one drop of blood, you can put this drop of blood into a machine. Anybody can access it and you can uh, test yourself for like if you're prone to get in cancer or, oh, wow. or if you've got diabetes or yeah. if you're sugar, like your levels are low or high. And anyway, it was too, one of those two good to be true things. But you can't, you, you can't imagine that in some years time that those things will exist because, mm. you know, we would probably have never thought that you could... Um, you know, stick a stick up your nose and then tell if you have COVID, for example. Yeah, yeah. And uh, or like, you know, wear something that like increases improves your eyesight instantly. And that they obviously just called glasses. Glasses that and when when something haram comes in front of you, it blocks it off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it definitely like. But that, then it takes away the choice. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the other scary thing. That, mm. That's why you have to speak to a because <coughs> yeah, it becomes tough because um, there's things that exist now that. Um, like for example Doing a direct debit Of sadaqah uh, Great idea I can't see a problem with it And But I'm sure The scholars have Debated about that And yeah. gone Well so There's a difference isn't is there Is there Yeah Like are you Is it the same If you're like Just like oh, I'll set that as direct debit For 10 years and How does that work Every time do you get You know It's, it's too big of a Discussion for us to have now, but I'm sure the scholars have spoken about mm, that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it does get it does get techy, but it's just interesting because AI is obviously the future. VR, bro. So, um, so VR is the future. VR is going to be yeah. like there, there's there's been discussions whether it'd be valid to do Hajj with a, a fake virtual Hajj. I mean, oh, I mean, surely <laughs> not. Yeah, no. so we, me, me, the EF Dow team start doing VR um, Dawa, so going into chat rooms and the VR. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Sets. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think VR, like the metaverse things, it's going to be, um, it's, I think it's a tragedy, but it's also very much a lot of opportunities to do good in those in those areas as well. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know, bro. Have you got some ideas? You try and don't say it too much because someone will steal it. And then No, because everything that I have is unrealistic right now. But yeah, I'm just trying to think like what we do know that we have access to is. Um, so the more of our lives are becoming uh, in sync with technology. And there's, there's starting to become less and less that you can do that isn't tracked by technology. Mm. I.e. It's, it's becoming a lot harder to live off the grid. And because we have wearables like our watches, we have our phones that we're always using. And so eventually, especially if you go into the glasses thing where there's, you know, Apple have created glasses, Google have created glasses, Facebook have created glasses. Like there's all of these different things. And there's a company called Google X where Google try and like come up with like crazy ideas with technology and seeing wh what sticks and stuff. But it's very realistic to imagine that 10 years time, 10 years time that it you'd almost be unable to function without constant technology. Yeah, yeah. And when you get to that point when you're wearing glasses that we got track what you're looking at, you got, a, yeah, let's say you have a chip, you have a what. When you get to that point, it'll be very easy to track the data of when your iman is low. Because it's like, imagine like, oh, um, you, uh, your, your, your base, uh, so the technology can track that generally speaking, you, um, your standard as, um, as as Benikra example, obviously, is that you it knows that you tend to go to the mosque uh, for three out of five of your prayers a day, mm. and now all of a sudden in the last two days you've gone once out of the five prayers, so it's it's detected that for your subjective um, kind of uh, standing mm. you're doing things that are less. It goes and then it compares yeah. that to oh Ben's also. Um, not in his hometown right now. He seems to be in Liverpool, but he lives in yeah, London. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. In that case, that's, it might not be because his man is low. Yeah, it must yeah. be because he's traveling. So that's the AI you're talking about, right? Yeah. But then it's like, oh well, Ben is in London. He's at home. He's doing everything else like normal. But it just seems to be that he um, is going to the mosque less. Maybe his man is low. Maybe we can then um, do things like, for example, give him certain reminders or. Um, uh, or like make it easy for him in some way yeah, or like yeah. encourage him like psychologically like what is the encouragement because uh, or like we've noticed that he's eating a lot uh, unhealthier and he's like going to the mosque less and he hasn't read his portion of the Quran today because like, we can see that through his glasses 
And so the pattern seems to be that he's f- fulfilling more desires because yeah. the desire of fulfilling the desire to eat what you want to eat is is connected to the desire of like oh going to the mosque is a bit long right now I'll just pray at home yeah yeah and then it does something based off of that now again it gets techy because you're you don't want to fall into playing with Islam yeah. Uh, but I'm just saying I'm not saying it from a scholarly perspective I'm saying it from a tech perspective that it's conceivable that those things 100%. could exist because we've got, we got it with algorithms now when you're like on social media it'll, it'll know what ad, uh, ads to give you and stuff because yeah. it's watching your activity and, and, and it knows you've been to this place at, at the moment and what does that mean and, and it, it, it tailors it to you I mean, and maybe you can imagine. do it like that like in, in, in less direct worshipy ways maybe like doing it to do with salah and sins yeah. is too direct worship and you can't mess with that but maybe it's something like um, the food thing like okay he seems to be um, fulfilling he, he seems to be like fulfilling his desire of eating whatever he wants to eat a bit too much here we know that that means that equally fulfilling one desire makes it easier to fulfill other desires so let's like now um, steer his uh, steer things in a direction where he knows, hey Ben, you know you've eaten like a, over your calorie limit yeah, for like yeah, yeah. a week in a row. Like, is everything okay kind yeah, of thing, yeah. right? Or like you've cried more than you normally cry. It must be Ramadan. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think there's something, but it's very I, I techy. I don't know. Yeah, it's very techy. But also, it's, it's scary because it's, it, all the, these things take away self-realization, which yes. is quite powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, the, the best lessons I've learned in life is I've gone through the hardship and I've learned the hard way and, yeah. and then become better from it. And the ones that, that someone's just told me to do something that way is where I've taken it for granted or I haven't, I hasn't, I haven't, you know what I mean? 100%. Action, and actions are just by the intention. So uh, I, can't, I don't know what I'm getting at with that, but there is a link there somewhere in that, there's more there's uh, there must be more re- reward in exactly. finding it find like reflect one you you've got to reflect which is uh, something that's a, a, a good do, good thing to do anyway you've got to reflect so straight away you're obeying a law and you're getting reward from reflecting on the day yeah. then it's like oh what have i done okay so what have i done wrong so the, the repentance and all that sort of stuff but if someone if a phone just going blah, 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 do, you've done this and then you go oh yeah right sorry yeah i think there's a beauty in yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, like you're right it's like the self-realization that oh I haven't been going to the mosque as much lately. 100%, 100%. What have I been doing wrong? Instead yeah. of a computer telling you what are you doing, it's like why is this? Why is this yeah. thing that knows nothing about my life that's telling true. me about that's my true. life? That's true. That's very true. It, that could also weird, that could that, could that could that could almost like reduce your iman. Yeah, reduce your iman because now it's become robotic. Right. It's like um, well, a perfect example is like uh, it's like about your fitrah, isn't it? So like about your your natural. It's like walking to the mosque versus getting the car to the mosque. Mm. There's like with each step you take to the mission. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't know if that I don't know if that ruling is the same for driving. I'm not sure, but like it's definitely harder to walk to the mosque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or like, there's a, there's like a lot of good like especially when you because look at that. So, so if someone look uh, lived next door to the masjid, the person who lives in the at the edge of the village or the town or whatever is going to get more reward than the person that lives next door to the masjid. Yeah. So, further, yeah. Why? Because there's loads of reasons. There's there might be more opportunity for that person to do good deeds on the way, thinking time, dhikr, anything. So is there's there's Allah's got there's a lot of wisdom in things. Yeah. We can kind of pursue uh, like pursue. <laughs> We can kind of guess what the wisdoms are. We don't know. Allah's not told us. Um, and uh, the, the the I think just generally the best thing to do is to do things how the Prophet peace be upon him did it. Um, when when it's to do with the religion. And, yeah, you're yeah, right, hundred um, percent. And the closer you get to that, the better it is. I think it, even if technology now would make it easier to do it in a different way. I don't know. That's how I feel. No, you're right. 100%, yeah. You're hundred percent. You follow the Quran and the Sunnah. As, uh, like when it comes to dunya stuff um, use technology to your advantage as much as possible when it comes to worship it first would definitely advise get advice from the scholars hmm. and you're right like following the Quran and the Sunnah you can't go wrong yeah there's there's lots of things that, that you do traditionally before that we now can do on our own like getting taught uh, the Quran you can go on YouTube and yeah, you can true, teach true. yourself the Quran and so on but, but actually sitting with someone 
there's loads more reward in it for one you're you, when people gather in it, it to, 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 remember to, re, Allah, yeah. to remember a lot there's there's angels will flood you know and um is it the same on zoom i don't know like yeah, is it the know, same yeah. doing it on youtube you've got someone there's a connection there so now you're building relationship with another muslim uh, there's loads of things doing it so, the way the prophet peace him did it and um i think amazing. yeah i'm just th- like just reflecting on it now to be honest and it's interesting it, isn't it yeah isn't it? but it's good to have these discussions it and is. then think about that and then it's like nothing, come back to the conclusion that actually follow the follow the sunnah yeah man um this was a very good episode it is lovely that episode. is going to be released before ramadan i think it's, it's yeah, very yeah, sure. nice the, the stuff that we spoke about is very good to lead up yeah that's a good idea can you yeah. smell that lovely chicken yeah that's all I can think about now. Yes, yeah, we'll end it, don't worry. Uh, ben, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, having it's been amazing. Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Honestly, it's been lovely. I've been really looking forward to having you on the podcast. Yeah, and, really. and it's been, it's exceeded at my expectations. Awesome. And uh, so, uh, thanks so much. And please, as I say with all of the guests, once you've been on once, the door is always open. Please do come back. And um, perhaps, because uh, you're a seasoned podcaster, so perhaps uh, you could guest a host in some episodes for us. Inshallah. That'd be really cool. That'd be awesome. If you're up for it. Yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah all right, yeah. guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the podcast, episode 270 with Ben Ikra. And well, why did you use Ikra? So it's not my name, right? It's just it was just a YouTube username that I did ages ago, and the reason being um, is that uh, like the, the it's the first ever revelation from the, uh, to the Prophet peace upon him. The story of that is amazing. Um, it's beautiful. It means a lot. It means re- recite the Quran. It means read, learn. Um, it, it's, it it convey as well. Um, there's a lot of meaning behind it. I've always loved Iqra. Okay. Um, in fact, when I, um, when I first became a Muslim, like back in the day, I got, like, got a T-shirt and I got it printed. Iqra. Yeah. Nice. That, not because it was like a, like my name or whatever. Like and it's not my name at all. My, uh, like I I uh, basically um, when J- you know Jordan, he yeah. started a YouTube channel and he started doing live streams on there, and I started to join them and I needed a, an account. Um, and I only had my account with my full name. I didn't really want my personal details out there. And I was like, well, oh, they can know my first name, Ben. And I was like, the first thing I thought of was Iqra. And it just stuck. That's now. amazing. And it's around it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, subhanAllah. So that, that's that's just what it is. So yeah, a lot of people think my name is actually Ben Iqra. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, yeah. Well, it can be. Who says Good. it's not? Who says it's not? No, I don't like that. So I'll challenge okay. them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like... like Sometimes it's weird. Like now, you, when you address me as Ben Ikra, it's, it's weird to me because it's really? just, I see it as just a YouTube channel. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, like, when I started working with Ayera, that's what happened. I was like, it's, it's just Ben, bro. Like, that's, so, that's the, so uh, that's a good question to ask. So, do you mind being called Ben Ikra? I don't mind it. So, on you, when we title this episode, if we say Ben Ikra, is yeah, that. Yeah, well, I, I think that would be good because it, it kind of links, links me to my other fine. work on, uh, that people But can generally access. speaking, it's Ben. Yeah, it's, when it's mates and that, if someone calls me Ben Ikra, it's like a formal thing almost. Right, yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. a personal thing, people know me as Ben yeah. and my second name, which I don't put out there because, like, because uh, people are mental on the internet. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Right, ben, thank you so right, much uh, for your time. Here. And, guys, we'll see you, inshallah, next week. Week. Remember, there's still tickets available for London and Manchester. Go to, head over to freshlyguided.com for slash tour. Ben will be there at London, inshallah. inshallah. And uh, Fawaz and I will be at both of them. And you're welcome to come to Manchester, by the way. Hamza's going to be there. So cool, man. Come with Hamza. Inshallah. And if Issa's back, is Issa back in the country? Um, I don't know, actually. Yeah, I think he is Fine. now, yeah. Then he's prob- he probably will come yeah, to Manchester. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well. So we come bring the I I've never been to Manchester before. No. Yeah. I've, never, I've, I've not been up north much. Well, come on uh, next Friday, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. If you're, if you're look, but now you're I'll now do, you work for yourself. I think the London so one guess I what? Could definitely need to go to. Hi, boss. Hey, uh, can I have Friday next Friday? Off? Sure. I've got clients. It's a difference. Yeah, it's true. Clients, a high client. But do you not? Well, do you have any meetings <coughs> next Friday? Huh? Do you have any meetings next Friday? I, I, do you want Friday? I think yeah. I've got it. I've got to edit we'll can, a, we'll a live stream. We'll, we'll cancel, cancel it. it. We'll, 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 we'll figure this out. Yeah. So it really, it's just about asking the wife because you've got kids. Wives. Yeah, yeah, that's true. In. Definitely on. So that's the, actually the on real the fifteenth. Is it fifteenth? Yeah. yeah. I definitely. I've got a day blocked out. So alhamdulillah, we can go to London. Sorted. Everyone sure. got north. It's you know. Yeah, it's true. No, I'm joking. Yeah, we should say around Charlie's house. Take it up. Uh, well, I'm gonna take care. Thanks so much. I will see you next week. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam.